hey guys this section is about best practices frequently asked the question etc we will have decent amount of lectures in this section but mostly short lectures and theory lectures with the visuals no hands on i think it's important to know about all these concept but it's up to you if you are not in the mood to go through some common questions some theory lectures probably you can check this out later we were doing a consumer acknowledgement in the last section right similarly we also have something called producer acknowledgement but when we say producer acknowledgement this is not something like we would be acknowledging instead we would be looking for acknowledgement from the kafka broker that is what is the scenario see here we are talking about network calls right so this is our application and this is kafka broker so we send a bunch of records to be uh, to write into a kafka topic or partition right so when we send these many messages how do we know that kafka writes or wrote all these things into the topic properly how do we know that actually okay so we can ask kafka broker to provide some kind of acknowledgement whether it has written successfully or not okay so this is something like we would be looking for when i say we you do not have to do this the producer the library the client library right it does that automatically for us so we send the records then we ask for acknowledgement so the kafka broker right it will write this information into this some offset okay then it will send us the acknowledgement back so this the library behind the scenes it monitors all these things for us okay suppose we did not get the acknowledgement so the library will automatically retry to it will send the messages one more time okay it will automatically retry again you do not have to do anything it will be automatically retried there are some properties we have to be aware of but those are like default one okay so i'm going to cover that let's consider this scenario i have three replicas for a single partition topic so there will be one broker will be which will be acting like uh, like a leader and i will be having two followers okay so they are all in sync okay so if i send messages to the kafka broker and ask for acknowledgement what does it really mean what does it really indicate so the acknowledgement basically confirms that the records were successfully written into the leader and also they were replicated into the in sync followers okay so this is the default behavior this is this is very safe position right so our records were successfully written here and they also they have been replicated to the followers okay so this is the default behavior and i assume that this is what we would mostly want okay but we can modify if we do not like this behavior if we have to modify the property what we have to modify is acknowledgments acks this is the one um, we are talking here so the default value is minus 1 that basically means that the data or messages should be should have been successfully written into the leader and they also should have been replicated to the followers then acknowledge okay so then we will be receiving the acknowledgement so it basically confirms that they all have the data okay we can also set that to zero if you want that basically means that we are going into the fire and forget mode that is i will be sending the messages i do not really care if the data was successfully written into the leaders or followers okay something like that so why would someone do this this is mainly to increase the throughput actually since you do not care about acknowledgement so we can keep on sending the data so definitely it, it will give us much higher throughput actually it it all depends on the application okay then we have um one uh, when we set to one it that basically means that um, i do not care about the followers as long as the data is successfully written into the leader give me the acknowledgement that is what we are saying here eventually the data might be replicated to the followers but we are not going to wait for um the the data replication okay so eventually that could happen but we do not care here 
as long as the data is safe in the leader's partition we are good now let's consider another scenario i have um, replication factor set to 3 so i have one leader two followers okay and i have set the acknowledgement to all so i am waiting for acknowledgement from all the node okay perfect now one node went down for some weird reason somebody restarted something happened so if i try to produce a message what will happen to me as a client should i be waiting for everyone to respond something like that actually no the acknowledgement all basically means that it's a leader and the in sync followers okay since this guy went down it's no longer in sync so in this case um, as long as these two are in sync we will be getting acknowledgement okay but when this node comes back up the data will be replicated then they all will be in sync then we will be sending acknowledgement we are going to talk about another important property which is very closely related to the acknowledgement property particularly when you set acknowledgement is equal to all in the previous lecture i had said that when you set acknowledgement is equal to all the leader will get, receive the request it will write it will try to replicate to the all the followers then it will acknowledge so what if this guy goes down or not reachable the leader will try to replicate to this follower and it will acknowledge okay now the question will be what if this node also goes down what will happen in this case in this case uh, the leader will write that data as and when it comes right it will write the data into its disk and it will acknowledge immediately okay so great but now the question would be how is this different from acknowledgement equal to one right so just think about this we as a um, developer or producer we all have been thinking all this time that i have been setting acknowledgement is equal to all so the, yeah my data is spread in multiple uh, nodes so my data is safe so we all have been thinking like this but currently only one node has the data right this could be okay in some cases or this might not be okay in some cases okay so this is where we have another property called minimum in sync replicas that is when you create a topic we also have to specify how many minimum in sync replica you want for your topic okay so by default this value is one okay so the replica is slightly that's, that is different from minimum in sync replica that is how many replicas you want i want three and how many in sync replicas minimum you expect to have at any condition okay so by default the value is one okay so because of this what will happen here is even when this node down and this node is down right since at least we have one in sync replica the leader is always in sync actually so that is a minimum in sync replica so as long as we have one in sync replica it will acknowledge now we can set that to two we can set that to three whatever you want okay so when you set that to three right when you create a topic if you say that i want minimum three in sync replicas now when we receive a right request the leader will see okay but currently i have only two um currently we have only two so the other guy is down so i cannot accept your request so it will reject okay so now this will give us the confidence saying that whether my data is safe in in multiple nodes or not okay so now we will be getting a proper acknowledgement okay it will reject now we as a developer as a producer we can retry later etc okay where to provide the minimum in sync replica so when you create a topic kafka topic okay so i'm creating order even topic i am saying that i want three replicas three but i want minimum two in sync replicas so you, we have to provide this via minus minus config then min in sync replicas equal to two okay if i hit enter then the topic will be created in this lecture we are going to talk about another important concept called item potent producer and one common question related to that okay first let's consider this scenario the producer as usual sends a bunch of records to write into the kafka broker um, some partition okay so we say we say it sends the records okay kafka broker receives the messages and writes them those messages 
um, into the partition. Okay. Uh, this is like this is a simplified uh, diagram. So okay. Now it once after writing the messages, it sends the acknowledgement to the broker. As usual, there is some network issue. The acknowledgement did not make it to the client. So what client thinks is that I sent those messages. This guy didn't send me the acknowledgement. You know what? I'm going to retry. So it will try retry to um, deliver those messages one more time. Now the question is, how will Kafka broker react to that scenario? Because it has already received those messages. It it write it wrote those messages at uh, and it even send the acknowledgement now it receives the same messages one more time so what will what it will do will it write duplicate messages here or it will not write actually the answer is it will not write and it will directly send the acknowledgement back to the client the way in which it works is that so let me go back okay so the way in which it works is that when we are using this client library, when we the, when the applications um, send the messages to this library, right? The library receives those messages and it generates some internal sequence IDs and it attaches those IDs to these messages actually, okay? We do not have to worry about it. It happens behind the scene for us, okay? So this guy delivers those messages to the broker. The broker as usual writes and send the acknowledgement but client did not receive the acknowledgement. When the client retries, right, the same sequence IDs are there in those messages actually, okay? So when the Kafka broker receives those messages, hey, I have already written all those messages because I know those sequence IDs, it's already there. So it will directly send the acknowledgement, okay? So this is how it works. For some applications, again, of course, it depends on the application. Some people think that uh, generating uh, and comparing all these sequence IDs are time consuming. I don't like this behavior. It affects my throughput. I want to disable this behavior. Then you can change this value to false. So in the recent version of Kafka, they they explicitly changed this to the de default. Um, this is the true is the default value in the recent version of Kafka actually. Okay. So Kafka older versions, they used to write duplicate messages as part of the retry. Now they have made changes via properties with the default settings that they kind of de avoid the problem. They kind of fixed that issue. Okay. However, if you want to override, we can override. Now we understand what idempotent producer is, right? Now let me clarify one more thing related to that. And this is important. Okay. So the idempotent producer right is only we are talking in terms of like the client library retry okay so that is you as a developer or the application when it generates duplicate messages let's imagine that you as a developer you created these messages twice okay you already sent these messages they were written but by mistake your application created another set of same messages okay somehow some bug in the code okay let's imagine so so what will happen now so the enable item buttons will it help me actually no it will not help you and those messages will be sent to kafka broker and the kafka broker will write those messages as a new messages new set of messages actually okay so why is mainly because these messages will be having a different sequence id Okay, see remember that the sequence IDs are generated by this client library and it sends those messages, right? So whenever it receives new messages from the application, it assumes that those are like new set of messages actually, okay? So the enable item buttons, we are talking in terms of this li library and the retry perspective only, okay? If, you are, if your application itself generate duplicate messages, then you have to be careful. That is not this library's problem and it's not Kafka broker's problem, okay? Hey guys, in this lecture, we are going to talk about idempotent consumer. In the previous lecture, we were talking about idempotent producer. Now we are going to talk about idempotent consumer. Okay, so now you will be uh, wondering, 
is there any property called enable item potent consumer is equal to true if you are looking for something like that actually there is no such property okay so if you remember we have already talked about this so the we as a consumer application we ask for messages kafka broker will give the messages we will be processing we sent acknowledgement somehow it did not uh, reach the broker so if we ask for one more time there is a very good chance that kafka broker will send those same messages back to us okay so will i not be processing one more time will i not be charging my users one more time if these are like credit card events or something like that yes that could happen okay so how can i fix this okay so i would suggest you to th this follow this process actually okay so let's we have to set we have to uh, update our producer to set some kind of unique message id or event id something like uuid okay remember i am not talking about key keys are different okay so i am talking about very specific id to uniquely identify one particular event okay so some kind of unique id for each and every event so that's what i am talking about so the producer has to set those ids for each and every event and it writes the message the id could be part of the payload it could be part of the header it, it's all up to us okay so it writes those messages into the broker now when we ask for messages kafka broker will give those messages to us okay that is the next step the very next step is the third step is do not process immediately okay the we have to check our database some table okay we have to check if these ids are already present have i already seen those messages or the message ids if they are present they are duplicates don't touch them simply acknowledge immediately without processing okay if these ids are not present then these are like new messages we can process once after processing insert the record into the database first then acknowledge okay so this is how we have to make our application as an item potent consumer remember that this is the application we own we as a developer we develop this as application okay so it is up to i mean it's completely up to us it is our responsibility to keep this application safe it is not this guy's problem it is not this guy's problem okay so it is our responsibility okay so what if the producer does not have the message id so what should i do okay in this case each and every message right if you had noticed we can get this information like a which topic which partition which offset date and timestamp it contains a lot of useful information actually okay so we can use all these combination like topic partition offset all this combo right you can treat them as some kind of an id and we can log that information if the message does not have a message id okay something like that hey guys in this lecture we are going to talk about another important concept setting compression at the producer side here we have our producer application and our consumer application our producer application keeps on producing lots and lots of messages okay so we also have couple of properties if you remember linger.ms the batch size etc so sometimes to improve the performance we collect the messages and deliver that to kafka broker okay so how are how how are we delivering the messages to the broker it's a network call right so it depends on the message size we can see some elevated latency um, when you deliver the messages to the broker actually okay if if this message size if it's huge then it will take more time to deliver the messages because they will have to be transferred via the, this network okay also these messages they have to be stored somewhere in the leader and the followers as well okay so they will take disk space as well of course then when the consumer ask for messages the broker will have to deliver the message again it's another network call here we can also see some elevated latency okay so the idea here is to enable compression at the producer side so that we can compress the message to reduce the size okay if the messages are compressed okay 
then the size will reduce so it will be easy for us to transfer the message to the broker so it will improve the latency okay or reduce the latency because of that we can see better performance okay since the size is reduced now it will also take less disk space in the leader and the followers okay and it will be easy for the broker to deliver the message as well to the consumer there is a producer side property for that it's a, the property is compression dot type when i started my kafka producer i saw this so i thought of taking a snapshot so that i can show this to you but all other properties are not related to compression okay so we are talking about only this property okay so the default value is none that basically means that the compression is not enabled by default if you want you can set that to gzip snappy lc4 etc these are like various algorithms i would say okay so the gzip compression ratio is good but it will take more cpu snappy is not as good as gzip compression ratio okay but it will take less cpu okay so i have seen some people saying that you should be always enabling compression something like that but for me i would say you have to test okay because compression it's kind of time consuming or cpu intensive task and uh, it also depends on your network etc okay so when it comes to performance right i i would say always you change it and test it once to confirm that if it really works for you okay and is there any consumer side property should we worry about actually no there is no consumer side property when the consumer sees the message compressed it will automatically decompress okay so there is no property here hey guys let's discuss this common question in this lecture sometimes people will ask how many topics should i create for my application the scenario is this we have an e-com application in which people can place an online order update an order or cancel order so should i be creating separate topics for each and every event like order created events topic order updated topics order cancelled events topic something like that or should i be creating one single kafka topic called order events so what is the best practice here the answer is it depends actually okay but i would like to say few things so that you see the picture and decide yourself based on your application requirements okay let's consider rdbms table let's forget kafka for a moment actually okay so do you create separate table called created orders updated orders cancelled orders do you create tables like that actually order is an entity any insert update delete goes to the the same table right similarly these events belong to the same entity depends on the application we need to worry about message ordering as well that is we cannot update an order which is not yet created we cannot cancel the order which is not yet created so if we create multiple topics like order created events order updated events something like that then we cannot guarantee the message ordering actually you are getting right so there is a very good chance that the order updated event messages will be processed first before the order created events so if you worry about message ordering you know what needs to be done in this lecture we are going to discuss a common question sometimes people might ask how many partitions should i have for my topic questions like this are very difficult to answer because it depends on the application however we can come up with some number actually for example let's consider an app in which the consumer is capable of processing 100 events per second as per our business use case we expect 1000 events per second there is no issue at the producer side they are able to easily produce in a single partition they are able to produce all these events in a single partition easily so we can create a topic with one partition but the consumer cannot catch catch up with the producer as the consumer is very slow so in this case in order for us to run a 
10 consumers to catch up with the producer we need 10 partitions right so we can create a topic with the 10 partitions we can also add some buffer to be safe for example expected throughput is 1000 events per second my consumer throughput is 100 events per second so 1000 divided by 100 is 10 but what if something goes wrong so let me add some buffer so 2 to that so we can create 12 partitions to be safe so we can do something like this now let's consider this scenario here our consumer is capable of processing 10 million events per second super fast okay and as per our business use case we also expect 300 thousands per second 300,000 uh, events per second so since consumer um, throughput is a lot faster or much higher than the expected um, throughput right so we can create a topic with the one partition here okay but here here we are saying this mainly because our um, consumer throughput is higher right so we can create a topic with the one partition so the problem is one partition will have one leader okay and the one leader is going to be one broker but what about the producer broker communication so when the producers when they produce events they all will go to one producer right so it's almost like sending too many too much requests to one single node you are getting right so what if this communication is slow and we are not able to reach the 300,000 events per second when you continuously send all the requests to one single node or one single broker you are getting right so sometimes if if this communication is using this if you are able to do only this much then probably maybe we can create a topic with the three partitions so three partitions will be having three different leaders so that will be different brokers assuming it's a large cluster actually then we can we should be able to um, achieve this uh, expected throughput okay so here even though one consumer is enough so in order for this um, our support our broker uh, producer communication so we create a topic with the three partitions so you are getting right so it all depends on how much throughput you, you are expecting actually so if you have to decide based on that sometimes we might think like this you know what I'm going to be very safe so I'm going to create a topic with the 10,000 partition so that there will not be any issues something like that the problem here is Kafka has to elect leaders and followers for each and every partition you have said. Okay, so if you said 10,000 partition, so it, it will have to elect 10,000 leaders actually. So it's a lot of work. So decide your partition based on the throughput and add some buffer to your calculation to be safe if you want. Worst case, we can always alter the number of partitions later. So it's no big deal. Okay, so if you remember, we had already discussed how to alter the number of partitions. Let's consider this similar question for the replication factor. How many replicas should I have for my topic? Okay, so one important thing here is partition is for scaling. Replica is for availability. Okay, so remember that. Do not forget that. Okay, now let's assume... Uh, let's consider a Kafka broker okay one Kafka broker which will never go down in its life let's assume so okay so this is the best case actually so in that case we just need one replica we should be good because that broker will never go down and we can always get the data from that broker so we do not need any backup or anything like that okay so one replication factor is enough but in the real life things will not go like that okay servers will be restarted as part of the maintenance work etc so how many brokers you expect to go down at the same time in your cluster let's say in a hundred node cluster you expect five servers to go down at a time in that case we need six replicas for our partition or for our topic okay so basically n plus one if you expect n servers to go down at the same time so you have to create n plus one replica so that you can be safe okay so that is the idea what about minimum in sync replicas so we have to take that also into account that is the default value is one so because of that we had said n plus one 
But if we had mentioned you want a minimum two in sync, in sync replicas, then we have to use n plus two as number of replicas for our topic. That basically means that, okay, that basically means in a hundred node cluster, if you expect five servers to go down at a time, then we want seven replicas for our topic and the minimum in sync replicas can be two so that at any point five servers can go down so that we will have at least two nodes uh, to accept our right request okay hey guys let's quickly summarize whatever we had discussed in this section first we were talking about the producer side acknowledgement Okay. By default, we would be waiting for acknowledgement from the leader and all the in sync, uh, the replica followers actually. Okay. I assume that this is what we would want for most of our application. It also gives us the confidence that our data is safe in the Kafka cluster. So even if one of the node goes down or leader goes down, right, we can using the followers, we should be able to kind of produce and consume data without any interruption okay but if you think that it's affecting your application performance you can always update okay then we were talking about item potent producer it's a property it's particularly for the kafka client library to retry and uh, and to ensure that not to uh, create duplicate messages okay but it does not prevent you as a developer to produce duplicate messages in your code level okay so if you are a developer of a producer side application, you have to be careful. Okay. Okay. So now then item potent consumer, if you are going to be a developer, right, you have to always um, doubt the other person. Okay. What if they do something wrong actually, because we as a developer of one application, we have to keep our application safe or item potent or make it more resilient. Okay. So it is our responsibility. So there is a very good chance that we might be getting duplicate messages. Maybe Kafka broker deliver the dupli duplicate messages or the producer, the developer is not as smart as you are. So he delivered produced duplicate messages. So because of that, we are getting duplicate messages at the consumer side. So we can follow our five step process. Um, to keep our application more resilient and item potent. Uh, in short, we have to log all those um, the message IDs in a table so that we can compare the, if we have already processed or not. Okay. Then compression. By enabling the compression, we can reduce the size of our messages so that it can improve the performance actually. However, in theory, yes, it will improve, but in real life, right, it might not because it depends on the network, the message size, there are so many things involved. So I would say test this once, okay? And how many topics should I create? Again, it depends on the application actually, okay? So do they all belong to the same entity? And do you need a message ordering? Then you don't have to ask the question because you already know the answer, okay? Then how many partitions do I need? Partition is for scalability, actually. So based on the producer, consumer, broker throughput, you have to decide the number of partitions, actually. And the replication factor is for availability. So based on the expected number of brokers to be unavailable, right? So based on that, you can decide the replication factor. Hey guys, in this section, we are going to take a look at a few options to do batch and parallel processing using Reactor Kafka library. We have to be familiar with the, some reactive programming concepts like concatenate map, flat map, group by, etc. But let's take a look at these options one by one. At first, we are going to talk about receive auto acknowledge using concatenate map. Before that, we have to understand this. As I had mentioned earlier, the producer consumer terms will be confusing. It all depends on how we see things. If this is the consumer application, then I see the Kafka broker as the producer because it has the data. Okay. And we as a subscriber, we request for items using the maximum poll records um, using that count. The default value is 500 but we can always adjust based on our application requirements so using receive auto acknowledge mode what if what will happen here is that right so when we request for like 10 items so we will be getting a flex 
which will be containing 10 items or the flux which will be emitting 10 items for us so as soon as you drain all the items it will be automatically acknowledged so that's what it means if if the concordinate map is a little bit confusing so let's imagine that you have flux multiple flux okay you have multiple flux so even though you have multiple flux first you will be subscribing to the very first flux okay once you have successfully drained all the items then you will be automatically subscribing to the next flux okay so this is how the concatenate map works so as soon as this queue is drained then we will be automatically acknowledging to the kafka broker then we will be start, start subscribing to this we will be processing all these items once this is done then we will be acknowledging to the kafka broker okay so you will be getting a flux of items so the way in which we request is using the maximum poll records okay i'm going to create a new package section 09 for this and i'm going to copy paste this section 8 classes here okay so let's modify so now i am going to update the bootstrap server beyond this point we don't have to use the the cluster we can use the single node um, kafka server actually okay we can use that we don't have to use the cluster again it's up to you so i'm going back to the 9092 so everything else is good here so we will be making some changes here so i'll come to that later and for the producer right um here again it's going to be 9092 um here everything looks good but i'm going to use flex start range because it's all about the consumer actually okay so i am going to emit like one two hundred items actually okay so that's it for now in the consumer side first i am going to add the maximum poll records consumer config maximum poll records i am going to keep it as three for now okay by default value uh, the default value is 500 that's too much so i am going to keep it as three for demo purposes uh, we can also add here okay I, have, I think i have already told you but we can also add it here if you do not want to touch this for some reason okay so this is also an option okay so now if you notice the receive returns flux of receiver record okay so now we will be processing each and every item here actually okay so instead of receive record there is also an option called receive auto acknowledge if you see it will give us flux of flux consumer record actually okay so you will be subscribing to each flux one by one so that automatically we will be kind of polling like three records at a time something like that okay so i'm going to create a separate method i don't want to keep everything here so for the processing i'm going to create a separate method since this is a static void so i'm going to create a static method here okay so it's going to return a mono void actually um, let me import this and uh, let me call this batch process okay so this we will be getting a flux of consumer record so this is what i'm going to get it here flux of consumer record okay so the flux of consumer record in our case actually it's object object okay let's let's keep it as object object so Oh, it's a flex let's keep it like this okay so now written flex whatever the processing we do right so probably let's do this here let's copy this and paste it here so you are just doing the okay since it's a since it's a flex right it will be containing multiple items so let's let me do this okay do first as part of do first i'm going to simply say log.info i'm going to simply just show that it's, it's starting the flux is starting something like that okay and then that's it basically this processing is done you do not have to acknowledge so once the flux when it completes it will be automatically acknowledged okay so that is the concept here okay so i am also going to intentionally delay this flux so i am going to delay by saying mono dot delay duration of second okay duration of okay yeah duration of seconds okay this guy shows this mainly because we have to say 
then okay so because it returns amount of long actually so that's why okay so basically this this the flux will once it's complete we will be waiting for one second then we will be emitting the complete signal here okay so that is what we are doing nothing else so that we can easily see the demo actually that is why nothing else okay so here uh, since as part of this uh, we are getting uh, flux of flux right so we are going to use concatenate map okay and we are going to pass the the value here kafka consumer batch process that's it see if you see it's done okay so yeah so this is what we are going to do i am also going to use a log here actually so that we can see what is going on okay so using the log we can see what is going on okay so now you know what i have done right no worries if it's confusing when you run this and we will we will understand this better okay so please go back to your uh, um terminal ensure that you have that order event is there actually okay so i have deleted so i am i have creating one okay from scratch so ensure that it is there okay and now that's it i am going to simply just produce some 100 items so this will produce and it will stop now i have 100 items in my topic right so okay so now let's see how this guy behaves let me run this and if you see okay so now if you see right how how it works actually okay if you see we are requesting uh, give me one item we are kind of requesting like this we get the batch contains four five actually we have already processed one two three actually okay so four five six then seven eight nine okay so something like this we are getting a flux of items we process one by one so this is why i wanted to separate this using this so it, it prints if you see it, it prints only once then we process all the three items then it's complete then next batch comes okay so we get everything one by one okay so let me stop this okay if i stop this right i wanted to show you something is it complete oh my god okay it's already done actually okay so if i restart this right probably we will be getting some items back okay so why i wanted to show this mainly because okay let me show this one more time okay let me produce this okay so 100 items produced right so now let's go come to kafka consumer one more time let's start this okay we get one two three four five six everything i'm going to stop okay if you notice we have got uh, we have got 13 14 15 okay now if i start this right again it starts from one two three you might think that oh my god is, is this not bad because we have already processed it then why we are getting like this okay let me stop it here okay so we have received up to 33 okay so if i start this right probably i will be getting like okay so 31 32 okay why it's mainly because why it's happening is mainly because see as soon as you even though the flux is complete right immediately it doesn't go to the kafka broker if you remember the come you acknowledge it's automatically acknowledged when the come the flux is done but but we are committing that in batches the commit interval is five seconds so that is why you the the the, the, the commit did not go to the broker actually okay so the our application it periodically sends the commits to the broker so the commit the interval right if you want to you can configure actually so the commit interval you can keep it like duration of seconds like one you can keep it like this okay so okay let me stop this this is done so let me go to the producer one more time let's let me produce 100 items here okay so it produced 100 items so now let me run this So now we periodically commit every one second actually or so so if i stop then there is a very good chance that i will be getting only this not this everything actually okay so if i run this see if you see i'll get i'm getting all i got only the 22 all those things actually okay so you can always adjust the the commit frequency if you want in the previous lecture we had a batch of record but we were processing sequentially one after another one batch at a time something like that okay sometimes you might want to do parallel processing 
okay so for that we can use flat map so for the same concept everything is going to be same but instead of concatenate map we can use flat map the way in which a flat map works is that when you have multiple flags it will subscribing to all these flags at the same time okay it's eager actually so it will be subscribing to all these flags at the time so whatever the items emitted it will be processing everything actually okay so this is how the flat map works okay so by default flat map can subscribe to 256 fluxes or publishers actually okay it, i should not be saying that it's a flux it can also be a mono okay just i'm saying actually so in our case it's a flux but in the real life it could be any publisher okay so flux are mono it will we can it, it will subscribe by default it's 256 publisher it can subscribe at the same time but it's a simple configuration you can always adjust it actually okay as usual i'm going to create another package I'm going to call this section 10 and I'm going to simply copy whatever we have here and I'm going to paste it. There is no change in the producer side here um, but for the consumer side instead of um, concatenate map I'm going to use flat map. No other change if you see actually okay. So this is exactly what we are going to do. So um, if you remember I had told you that this is the default uh, 256 this is where the 256 goes actually okay so if you want to reduce that to 10 or increase that to 1000 it's up to you basically what it means is that it can subscribe to these many publishers at the same time okay so since it's a 256 256 itself is a big number actually it is a number so what basically we are going to do is that we are requesting for 256 fluxes actually in our case we have emitted only 100 items right so we will be having maximum like 34 fluxes actually that's it 33 34 fluxes actually right so it can process almost all the items in one second that's it okay so we can see so let me produce some items okay so it's produced and i'm going to stop it now let you come to the consumer right if I'm going to run it and uh, you will see notice okay 256 item we are requesting okay that's it see all the hundred items processed okay so we 33 um, fluxes they they would have got completed so we are requesting they are all requesting again hey give me more items something like this actually so some okay so basically we have processed everything in parallel so yeah sometimes the flat map could be useful um, again depends on your um, use case in our examples we just uh, simply print it as a processing actually if i print it in the console basically i'm saying that yeah my processing is done but in the real life you might want to uh, make a database call to insert this record or update or maybe you might be calling some third party apis okay so you might be doing some certain things actually okay so what i would suggest to you to do is that they maybe if you think that it's a blocking operation or etc something like that who knows actually so you can always publish on a separate thread pool okay so here in this case i'm using bounded elastic okay just for the demo purposes but again you can change it to or do whatever you want you can schedule to any specific thread pool if you like okay so just um let me ready um let me produce this one more time so that we can see this okay stop this and consume one more time so that the processing the actual processing is happening in a will be happening in a separate thread pool actually okay so if again we got finished everything in a second but if you notice they are all getting executed in a different threads actually bounded elastic one bounded elastic two something like that okay in the previous lecture we were talking about flat map along with the receive auto acknowledge for parallel processing it worked great however there could be an issue with this approach again it depends on the application if you are worried about the message ordering actually okay so what what will what could happen here is that so when you use maximum poll records along with the receive auto acknowledge so when you say 10 right it will give you 
flux which contains 10 items so assuming if we have 100 items in the topic it will give us 10 flux each containing 10 items like this okay so when it creates a flux like this right multiple fluxes like this right so there could be an event let's say this is a credit event so it's landed here okay on the account number a1 and then the debit event would have happened okay the from the producer side but when you create multiple fluxes this event could land on a next flux like this okay so when you when you do parallel processing when you try to subscribe to all these fluxes at the same time right there is a very good chance that we might be processing this first before we process the credit event you are getting right where i'm going with this okay so this could be a problem even though kafka handled this properly using partition etc we get everything into the consumer application where we mess up with the ordering these events by doing the parallel processing actually okay so this could be a problem in some applications actually so you have to be very very careful if you are going to use flat map so in those cases i would say stick with the concatenate map so that you can do sequentially one after another okay but if you want to do some parallel processing and if you also want to do some ordering then there is an option actually the idea here is to use group by we will not be using receive auto acknowledge okay so instead we will be using receive so the receive will give us flux of items that could be hundred thousand doesn't really matter you get all the items okay um, using maximum poll records then when you get this many items right then we can do a group by based on something okay for example maybe i can group by um, account number actually it's a bad idea grouping by the account number is a bad idea but but listen actually okay for now so when you do a group by account number what will happen is all the a1 related events right everything will be going here a2 related events everything will be going here something like that so that within that flux okay now you create multiple fluxes but this flux contains only a1 and when you subscribe it you you will be processing everything sequentially one after another okay so this is the idea but okay so why grouping by account number is the bad idea because when you do when you do group by based on some account number right that could be an infinite number of accounts okay if, if you have 1 million account numbers okay then you will be having 1 million flex that's that's a lot actually okay so you should not be doing this way instead what we can do is that we can use actually we can use um, the way in which kafka does for the partition we use the murmur to algorithm we use some kind of a key right using the hash code something like that similarly we can do group by using some way depends on our application actually so that we can create a finite number of fluxes and we can have all these events to land on those specific fluxes so that so that we will not have uh, we can create finite number of fluxes and we can um, process them everything sequentially one after another okay so let's see a demo that time you um, it could be clear hey guys in this lecture let's see how to uh, do parallel processing with proper message ordering using group by okay so for that i am going to create another package and i am going to call this section 11 and as usual i am going to copy this guys and paste it here okay as usual there is no change change in the producer side uh, in the consumer side right um, we can remove this actually it no longer need this or we can also keep it that's fine so here i'm not going to use receive auto acknowledge i'm going to use receive okay so then uh, this guy will fail okay the the okay actually compilation issue that's fine let's fix that so here we are getting a flux of records okay so here what i'm going to do is that i'm going to do a group by okay so here i'm getting a record the receiver record so using this i am going to um, i am going to do some group by i have to come up with something so what i am going to do is that uh, we are emitting the number as the key right here we are emitting number as the key but as a string that's fine so what i am going to do is that i am going to you take some mod using that i am going to for example okay so integer dot 
parse int so here what i'm going to do is the record dot key okay so using this right is it not string is it because it's an object okay that's mainly because of this guy so i'm going to say it's a string and a string okay so that this guy will be happy okay so basically i'm saying that key is a string value string that's what i said okay so now we take the key value and i'm going to get the mod of five so that okay so this is just for demo so that we can we can ensure that we can ensure that this key the similar keys are, are always going to the same flex actually okay that is the idea so now the group by will be giving me a grouped flex okay so the grouped flex is nothing but a simple flex extension actually so let's keep it like okay grouped flex and this is not a consumer record this is a more of a receiver record okay so let me change that to receiver record okay it's complaining mainly because of string string okay let me change that as well okay still failing why is that so it's okay oh it's a group reflex contains um, the key as well actually sorry about that now it should be happy okay thank god okay finally it's happy okay so basically when you do a group by right it will give us group reflex with a key what is the key for that flex because it creates multiple flexes okay so what is the key for the flex and all the items okay so you can get this flex here actually okay so that's flex so this is what you are getting it here so what i'm going to do here is um i am also going to print the mod value so the mod value it's here in the flux dot key actually okay so this will give us the key okay so this key is different from record key this is a record key this is the grouped by flux key if the grouped flux is confusing sometimes it could confuse so if you click on it the grouped flux is simply extends flux so grouped flux is flux okay the only one extra method it has is key so after grouping for what is the key for this flux okay so that you can get it actually okay so this is what we are printing here nothing else you're getting right okay so since i am using receive not auto acknowledge so we have to acknowledge as well so i'm going to do the do on next r r dot receiver offset dot acknowledge okay so now it looks good to me now let's go to the producer and they emit all the items actually so we have emitted 100 items now let's come to the consumer okay so this could be slightly different now okay so this could be the behavior could be slightly confusing but let's pay attention okay so we got all the 100 items okay now if you see 100 is here 99 is here 94 is here 98 is here so the orders are kind of completely changed but we might panic but no worries okay so if you scroll up if you scroll up we create since we use mod by five right so it creates five different fluxes mod zero mod one two three four something like this okay it creates five fluxes so our as per our logic as per our logic you take a key and you divide the key by five okay if it's the value is zero go to this flux zero flux if the value is one go to one okay if the value is two go to two something like this is how we are splitting actually okay this is how we are splitting because of that if you see any value with the one okay the six they all will go to bounded elastic one okay if you notice right key one goes to bounded elastic one okay key six goes to bounded elastic one then if you take 11 it goes to bounded elastic one okay if you take uh, what else 21 if there is did you see 21 oh yeah 21 is here bounded elastic one something like this so anything with the ghost okay anything where the the value is one that will go to one flags actually okay similarly to the seven 
the 12 okay if you see they all go to another flex and it will be processed sequentially one after another actually you're getting right okay so the 17 etc so this is the idea okay so by doing this we ensure that we split here based on the key that was an idea but you can also use uh, maybe r dot uh, here we can also based on the partition number okay let's imagine that there are 10 partitions and uh, you have one consumer but you want to get all those partitions values okay so you get everything all the events but internally you can group by based on the partition as well okay so here this is also you can use actually based on our partition you can also use actually so we can also try that way okay just but i wanted to use this just for this demo purpose now if you notice how they are getting processed right okay so if let's take some number okay 74 it's it was processed by bounded elastic 4 right so the, the point here is now if you if you if you do not stop the producer okay sorry do not stop the consumer okay 74 was processed by bounded elastic 4 that thread group or uh, that flux right let me produce another 100 items one more time okay it, i produced okay let me stop it now if you scroll back scroll down if you check 74 right where is 74 you should be there somewhere here okay 74 right okay 74 the same bounded elastic okay four so this is how it will process you, you are getting right so it kind of guarantees that they all go to a specific flex okay something like this so we can also try this way so these are the couple of just suggestions i'll give you okay so this is demo but we can group by r dot partition that is one way or if you do not dip, if you don't if you do not want to go by partition you can get the key r dot key and the hash code java hash code okay so for the same key you will be getting same consistent hash code right okay that's great then take the mod based on the number of thread you have or okay something like this number of the cpu okay so then you can create those many fluxes then you can kind of get that processed using some th dedicated thread pools in parallel okay so that you can make you make use of all the cpus you have in your machine actually okay so these are certain things you can do okay so you can also do parallel processing and at the same time we can also ensure that um, the the similar keys they are all getting processed sequentially one after another actually hey guys this was a quick section and let's summarize what we did in this section we were looking at few options for message processing we can use concordinate map for the sequential processing if you do not want a parallel and if you want to get some items at uh, as a batch like five items at a time something like that then you can process these items one after another then you request for next batch something like that okay so this could be a good choice if you want to do some kind of batch processing with message ordering this is great if you do not care about sequential processing and you have plenty of cpu underutilized in the server then you can go for a flat map and make use of all the cpu you have you can do parallel processing okay so then if you want parallel processing along with the, some kind of message ordering based on key or something like that then we can use group by to create uh, multiple fluxes then use flat map to merge those fluxes okay when you use group by please be careful you should not end up having thousands of fluxes okay so be careful hey guys in this section we are going to talk about error handling first let's set up a package section 12 and i'm going to copy um, these two classes from section 8 actually okay so and then let's modify my goal in this lecture is to demo a simple processing issue what do i mean by that so here we have a kafka consumer 
and the Kafka consumer uh, when it's trying to consume the events, right? While when we process the events here, we might face some kind of exception. Who knows? For example, maybe you were expecting some field, but that field came as a null. So you didn't handle that properly because of that we got null pointer exception, okay? Something weird, something unexpected, okay? So that's what I'm trying to simulate and see well, how the um, the consumer is uh, it's reacting okay so that is the idea so for that right i'm going to intentionally uh, this is object right so two string okay two character array and i'm going to get the 15th or 16th character okay so that is the idea you might ask hey this is stupid it will throw exception okay so that's exactly what i'm trying to do okay it will it's supposed to throw exception for me actually okay so this is just for demo and if things are going fine all the do on next will be executed okay if things are going um, if things are going to fail actually here so we will be getting error so in that case we can ex um, invoke this callback actually okay so we can say log dot error ax dot get message okay so now uh, let's start the producer and let's try uh, let's produce some events and let's try to consume and see how things are working so let me produce run the producer and i'm trying to simulate 100 records so it stopped now let's come to the consumer okay so let me run this okay so it stopped okay so it's mainly because okay so because of this so this is we expected this so when the error occurs so this this the reactive pipeline right so this will stop we know this because this as part of the flux right when it emits it can emit n number of items okay it can emit 1 million items but when it emits error signal this will stop okay so what will happen here is that actually the error happens here actually okay so when the error occurs we will be emitting error signal here and we will be okay you know what let me do the logging once so that we can see this better and let me run this one more time quickly so okay so if you if you see uh, first we requested for unbounded give me all the items you have something like that that's how we have requested okay so it connected and it produced the very first record we can see this actually okay so the order number the record right the we we actually got this order one okay now during the processing we got some exception because of that we have requested cancel event okay we have requested cancel for the upstream and we emitted error to the downstream so because of that we are um, logging this error so when we say cancel right when you when you say cancel to the upstream right so that's it the even loop thread that will stop then the, the scheduler basically disposed because of that they are basically our application exits actually in the previous lecture we were trying to do our demo a simple processing issue so we got an error because of that this consumer basically stopped consuming events from Kafka okay so normally what we will do in the in, in cases like this we will try to do retry right so this is what normally we will do so let's try that as well and see how it goes so I'm going to use a fixed delay retry so because of that I'm using retry when fixed delay so I'm going to retry three times with a fixed delay of a, like a duration of one second okay duration of one second something like that this is what i'm going to retry so let me run this so we are connecting okay we got an error okay so we emitted a cancel event to the upstream so we immediately exited so what about re retry did we not retry actually yes we did not retry it's mainly because as soon as you emit the cancel for the upstream right the even loop thread or the scheduler right that immediately disposed actually okay so the application exits immediately so because of that the duration the one second the non-blocking duration one second right it will not even kick in actually because its application already exits actually 
okay so in order for this to work we have to use block lost okay so this is just for demo but in the production in the, the server type application if the server application is going to keep running this this would have worked actually okay so since here the jvm exists we have to do this actually so let me run this one more time and we here we should be able to see the retry okay so here the application is not exiting actually okay so the three retries got completed okay it's only three seconds right so it was super quick okay so but here application here exited of course but the problem here is if you notice if you notice so here we tried to connect to kafka okay again if you see so some error again we try to connect to kafka okay so basically my point here what i am trying to say here is that even though here we retried three times as we had configured everything worked fine actually so we retried all those things but here the problem here is we are unnecessarily disconnecting or stopping the even loop thread disposing the scheduler disconnect from kafka and again we try to connect to kafka okay again things are getting disconnected again we'll reconnect so we are doing a lot of disconnect reconnect all those things okay so this could be a problem this is like uh, i feel like this is unnecessarily we are trying to disconnect and reconnect for this issue okay for this processing issue so ideally we should be handling this little bit uh, in a separate pipeline okay so let's see how to do that in the next lecture hey guys this is what we did in the previous lecture we have one kafka receiver which contacts kafka broker to get us the flex of items when we were processing we got an exception so when an exception occurs in the reactive pipeline we will be emitting cancel for the upstream and the error even for the downstream so when you emit cancel for the upstream the kafka receiver thinks that oh that's it you are done processing then it does not have to emit any more items so it will stop contacting kafka broker and it will disconnect okay it also a lot of work for kafka broker that oh this guy disconnected so it will try to do rebalancing all those stuff okay so the point here is the kafka receiver its only job is to give us the flux of items and it does its job properly so there is no issue here in the receiver pipeline the issue happens when you try to process the record so we have to be careful here also even though if you try to retry right again and again we try to retry and ask kafka receiver to contact kafka broker since we have not acknowledged the message the same message is going to come here anyway and we are going to throw an error again we are going to retry so it is basically going to happen in a loop again and again okay so but the the record is good we have some processing issue right we have some processing issue the way in which we are processing so the idea here is to separate the processing like this that is kafka receiver will give us the flux of items as usual okay so when an, when we get an item what we are going to do here is we will be moving this item in a separate processing pipeline okay so a processing pipeline will be like this so we will be getting an item we will do some processing in case of error right the cancel it will automatically emit the cancel signal actually but it will not propagate to this pipeline okay so everything will be happening within this layer actually okay so here whatever you want to do you can do okay so if you want to retry you can retry or uh, if you want to retry if you want to go with some default value whatever you want to do you can you can do but we will not be emitting the error back to the receiver pipeline actually okay so whatever we are the processing we are going to do right we are going to keep this within this um processing pipeline actually so in our case when we get an item uh, we just simply print it that is what we think that it's processing but in the real life when we get an item right maybe you might be making a database call 
or maybe you might be calling a remote web service something like that so that call right those could be a publisher type so eventually you will be doing this in a separate pipeline only anyway okay so now let's see this in action i'm going to change the name to v1 um kafka consumer v1 okay so that i can create um another kafka consumer here i'm going to call this v2 okay so i'm going to slightly modify this so that i can move the processing in a separate um the pipeline so here i'm going to create another method i'm going to call this private static um, which is going to return mono of void okay let me import this so i'm going to call this process okay so here we are going to get a receiver record the receiver record of type um, it's object object type so let's keep keep it like that okay receiver record okay so now return mono dot just receiver record okay so now here we can do the processing okay so do on next here you'll be getting a record okay so um, here what i'm going to do here is let's keep it like that and i'm going to duplicate this guy and i'm going to paste it here I'm also kind of going to make it a little bit more okay let's index let's keep it like this I'm going to say thread local random current next int I'm going to intentionally kind of make this like dynamic okay so 1 to 100 I'm going so it will be creating generating some random number so which will get through it, it might work in some cases it will throw error in some cases okay that's exactly what we want actually so we are going to make this yeah so random actually so now if things are going fine actually okay so receiver offset we can acknowledge so in case of failure it will throw an error um this will exit and will move to the continue to the pipeline okay so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to copy this so here we can retry so the retry is going to happen here actually okay so let's do the retry here and finally let's also print the do on error if you want to see what really happened okay so if you want to print the message we can print okay so uh, whatever the retry right it will try to retry but the publisher is this guy okay so it is not this so the retry will be happening from, from starting from this so the same item is will be emitted so we will be doing the processing one more time so if you are going to make a database call or uh, database is down or the remote web service is down something like this so you can do the retry here we do not have to affect our kafka broker for this okay so that is why we are trying to separate this here okay so now here we can simply say uh, then that is we can simply emit um, mono.wide okay still we have to few do few things actually hold on okay so what i'm going to do is that here we are committing offset sorry or acknowledging offset only in case of success okay but even after retrying few times if you are still failing right maybe in the some cases we might want to simply acknowledge and move on okay so assuming let's do that way okay let's do that way so here what i'm going to do is that as part of do um finally okay do finally here what i'm going to do is that um receive a record okay okay so here what we are doing here is that uh, this in case of success the do on error all those things will be skipped and here we will be acknowledging okay in case of error we will be retrying three times even after three times it's still failing there is no point in doing this propagating this to um, kafka receiver actually so because we have to process the next item so we are going to simply acknowledge this okay so we will also going i'm also going to demo um 
another option to publishing the record to an another topic like dead, dead letter queue okay dead letter topic i'm going to demo that later okay so no worries there is another option as well okay so this is what we are going to do okay so but in case of error right we have to make that to a complete signal actually okay so we are going to do that actually so on error complete that's what we are saying here okay so now uh, this looks good so here we can move all those things actually okay so we can simply say uh, concatenate map kafka consumer v2 process actually i'm also going to change this to subscribe because we don't have to use the block lost okay so everything looks good so we can run before that I would like to make a couple of simple changes actually okay so uh, here right I would like to also print the index okay so what is the index we are getting here okay so let's print the index as well okay so this is good another thing is when you retry three times right when the read tries after re three retries the error what you will be getting here is all three retries exhausted retries complete something like that that is the error you will not be seeing the actual the index out of bound error so if you want to see that right we have to actually tell this guy to give us the original error so for that there is a method called on retry exhausted throw so give us the original error okay so we are going to ask for it so it's a by function we will there is two properties one, one is the spec and the signal though the the original error it's part of the signal actually okay so spec and the signal using the signal we can get the original error back okay so now we can get the original error so let's run this so we can we connect to our kafka broker we got the item okay so we are getting index out of bound exception and all now if you notice right order one order two order three so order four five see we keep going to the next item actually so there are also retries we are doing retries we also kind of accept the item and uh, in case of failure and move on okay so we are not stuck because of the error you are getting right if you notice 12 15 18 so we kind of wait three seconds three times we try to process in case of error you know what i tried three times it's still failing i'm going to accept and i'm going to the next item something like that and if you notice we just connected to the initial um, i mean we print the properties only once it basically means that we established the connection with the kafka broker only once and using that we keep fetching the item okay so we are not disconnecting from the kafka broker okay so which is good news actually right but so far everything is a failure that's very sad not even a single success i thought everything was random so i will be getting at least one success but looks like that's not the case wow okay see good that at least one success happened okay so this is good okay so this is really good so we got one success here okay looks like it happened as part of the retry but anyway that's happened which is good okay so another success here okay so things are working right so we keep moving forward and to the next record something like that in the previous lecture we were trying to do the processing in a separate pipeline and we were doing a lot of retries everything was handled in a separate pipeline so this was not affected okay so we saw that how things were working so what but since we had 1 to 100 right most of often times often times we got an error actually so how what will happen in case of a success case so in this case it will be super slow because it's supposed to be slow 
only for in case of issues that is only when we will be delaying and retrying in case of success cases right things should be super fast so in our so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to keep it as uh, one to ten okay so now the chance for us to get the index out of bound exception is slightly less since it's one to ten okay so that is the idea so now let me run this one more time actually before i run this i already produced 100 items okay so i should be good for this demo so let me run this and if you see let's see how things will go okay now if you see things are fast actually so now only for error right we are retrying see 36 items we have processed 40 44 45 46 49 53 see the, the thing is okay in case of error we delay other than that we 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 process everything super fast okay wow okay that's it 98 100 and uh, that's it we do not have any more items so we can stop at this point hey guys here we are going to consider a slightly a different scenario in this lecture not all the issues are same in some cases we want to retry after a few attempts we give up and simply acknowledge and move on to the next record okay so this is okay for some cases in some scenarios we cannot acknowledge without processing maybe it could be a mission critical record who knows okay so even after three attempts if it still fails we want to stop the consumer or keep retrying with the exponential back off for example database is down so in this case right there is no point in acknowledging the record and uh, move on, moving on to the next record okay so in those case those are like you, you want to keep retrying forever again and again just i'm saying with the exponential back off or simply you want to stop the consumer because there is no point in proceeding with the next record when your database is facing some issues okay it's down something like that so the retry when operator right it's very advanced um, so we can retry based on the exception actually okay so in the reactive programming course where we discuss the, the, the advanced retry concepts actually okay so let's also quickly do one thing in this lecture and uh, what we are going to do here is we will be retrying and acknowledging in case of the index out of bound error but we cannot tolerate database down error okay so this is what we are going to do so let me copy this v2 and i'm going to paste it here to create v3 a small slight variation of this okay nothing else so in our case we are going to retry based on certain conditions actually okay instead of retrying for any exception we are going to retry based on exception so that is the idea so i'm going to create a separate uh, method okay so which will give us retry spec okay something like that so i'm going to return return retry again i'm using fixed delay but you can use back off okay or we can also use from to build a um, a better retry object if you want okay with more advanced features actually okay so let me take a simple use case here so duration of seconds one okay and uh, same fixed delay um, three read uh, retries with the one second delay actually so here I'm going to do a filter saying that this is applicable only for index out of bound exception class okay so now okay actually basically it will give us the exception if you see it's a predicate of course so it's a throwable so we have to check if it's part of if, if this is this instance actually okay so is instance there is no such yeah this instance method okay we are checking whether it's that instance okay then on retry exhausted throw so we will have a spec and a signal i'm going to get the signal failure okay so you see nothing else that's it super simple stuff okay so now here i'm going to replace this with the retry spec 
okay so this is good now do on error as usual we are going to print it okay and here i do not want to simply acknowledge okay so okay this is let's stop this and we also do not want to on error complete that is not applicable so both are wrong actually okay so i mean for this case the scenario what i am considering now okay so the way in which i am going to simulate two different error error is that uh, let's skip this as a 20 okay so that um, we'll have more failures and success okay 50 50 chance something like that okay and here what i'm going to consider here here is that if the key dot the key equals if the key equals five that's what i'm saying okay so i'm going to throw new runtime exception here we are saying that hey database down okay so in that case we want to stop we want to propagate the error to the main pipeline and we want to stop this okay so otherwise okay we can still simply process this okay so now we can accept our dot receiver offset acknowledge if things are going fine yes this will be acknowledged okay okay so hopefully it's clear what i'm doing okay nothing much actually okay so here we are retrying everything okay so now i'm going to replace this with the on error we are looking for a specific error actually okay so on error we we have a lot of things so we have predicate so in our case right so i'm going to use the on error class okay so the error class so here we are we are saying if it's an index out of bound exception class in that case I have already retried even after that it's still I'm getting you know what let me I'm going to accept this and move on so that is what I'm saying so mono from runnable uh, receiver record receiver offset acknowledge okay so if you see this is what I'm doing just to give you an idea or repeat what I have done simply basically super simple stuff here as usual we get the record if the key is five we are simulating database down okay something like that okay so this is simple here as usual we will be getting an in, uh, index out of bound error so we will be doing the retry if it's only if this error okay if it's a runtime exception this retry will not kick in okay so remember that so if things are going fine we will be acknowledging if if you are getting this error we will retry when the when it throws database down right so we will not retry we will log it and this is not this error so the error will propagate to the main pipeline the receiver pipeline and we will automatically cancel we will stop um, the kafka receiver actually okay if it's an index out of bound error we will retry three times even after three retries it still we are getting the same right you know what let's accept it and move on so we simply kind of emit complete signal so that this guy will not stop okay you are getting right so i am giving you like i am doing this just to give an idea but you can kind of adjust based on your requirement okay so that's what it is nothing else ensure that your kafka broker is up and running so let's try to run the producer to simulate certain records okay so i have created some records now so let me run the v3 okay and see how things are working okay so now if you see um, if you notice for the order one order two order three we processed all these orders we went up to like uh, five actually okay so we kind of retried things were success in those cases okay but when when it comes to db is down and the the key is five so we immediately we do not retry we cancel the upstream and the emitted error to the downstream and we stopped okay so here the kafka broker stopped okay because we think that it's a major issue and we do not want to proceed further Okay. we can also adjust your retry maybe we can also um, do the exponential back off and we, we can keep on retrying again okay so it depends on the error so it's all up to us it depends on our requirement 
hey guys in the next few lectures this is what we will do i think this is very important this could be useful in some cases okay the concept here is let's consider a, let's consider the order events topic we try to process events one by one okay um, in case of failure we retry nothing special same concept okay after all the retry attempts if you are still if things are still failing so what we will be doing here is as part of this on error right we will be trying to produce the received record right whatever the record we have received we will be trying to produce the same record to another topic called dead letter topic okay dead letter queue something like that okay so each and every topic can have its own dead letter topic for example hello world can have its own dead letter topic order events can have its own dead letter topic okay so this could be useful in some cases if we have bug in our code for example we have developed the first version of our code and we did not handle things properly so we started getting index out of bound exception null pointer exception all those things okay so these are like not problem with the record this is problem with the our code in those cases what we can do is on error okay produce to dead letter topic something like that then we produce or uh, then we create another version of our code like v2 and we deploy the version that time what we can do here is we can consume these events from this topic okay the kafka receiver can consume from more than one topic you know right so we can also consume from dead letter topic and process the next time properly okay so let's try this the spring kafka library comes with the dead letter publisher actually okay but the, that, that is a standard one the, the non-reactive version okay they do not have the corresponding reactive version unfortunately so for me what i'm thinking here is that creating a separate dead letter producer is no big deal okay so we can create something on our own actually so let's try to create something on our own that will give you some idea as well okay so let's do that Let's come back to IDE. I have created a separate package, section 13, and I have, I have copied Kafka producer here and Kafka consumer v2, okay? These two for this demo. And let me modify this. I'm going to call this Kafka consumer, okay? So now we are going to create few classes here, okay? So for first one is going to be, uh, and it's going to be an exception class okay so record processing exception okay so something like that this is how i would like to keep okay we can slightly modify based on your requirement but this is just to give you an idea so which extends the runtime exception okay and here we are going to keep an instance of the receiver record the receiver record we will not know the type so it can be anything Okay. so receive let's call this record okay so now I am going to create a constructor so let's keep it like that okay so here we will be getting uh, the receiver record and we will also get the, the exception actually okay so I am going to give that to super e okay this is good okay so now then uh, i need a getter so let me generate the getter as well to get the record okay so that's it super simple stuff a simple exception which will be containing the record and we can get our record back later okay super simple nothing else hey guys let's continue our dead letter topic producer okay so so far in all our examples right we keep both producer and the consumer in the same package this is just for demo as you know okay in the real life consumer is a different application and producer will be a completely different application okay okay so now the dead, dead letter topic producer here so the consumer based on the exception after all the rate rare terms okay whatever it wants to do then it has to produce actually okay so we are not troubling this producer actually so the consumer has to produce the record to the dead letter topic okay so okay 
so here we need a separate producer for the consumer okay because we have only kafka receiver right so what about the sender so we need a producer here so that is what we have to work on so for that i'm going to create a separate class so let me try to create a class for that i'm going to call this reactive dot letter topic producer super lengthy name but this is okay so here it's going to i'm going to make this very generic k v key value okay so that's what i'm saying okay so here okay let me create the logger so this could be useful logger log logger factory get logger okay so reactive dot letter topic producer dot class okay this is good and i am also going to have one um, final kafka sender actually okay so so let's call this sender so now i am going to create a you know what let's also give the retry object here so private final retry retry spec okay so now i am going to create a constructor i assume that both will be passed to this class okay then i am going to have one public method for the time being i am going to say void but it will not be void let's come to that later okay so the method name is produce here we will be receiving the the receiver record because the kafka consumer will have the receiver record producer will have the sender record so we will be getting the receiver record so receiver record of kv types so we call this record okay so now we have to convert this to a producer record before you produce to a topic okay so we need a method probably it could be a private method okay so this will be converting a producer record sorry a receiver record to producer record okay so it has two types if you see um, okay it's a k v t t is the result metadata the, the correlation type okay so in our case i'm going to keep this as the same key type actually okay to sender record so here i'm going to get the receiver record of k type and v type record okay super okay so first we are going to create a producer record okay so new producer record okay the new producer record the producer record if you remember it contains uh, the topic key and value it can contain multiple information if you want to pass everything we can pass okay just i'm going to keep things simple okay and we have to give the topic name so the receiver record right it already contains all those details whatever you need to create another producer record so i'm going to say oops i'm going to say record topic so this will give us the topic okay but we are not going to send the record to the same topic where it came from in seed i am going to send that to dead letter topic so i assume that if there is an order events there will be order event dead letter topic if it's a hello world there will be a hello world dead letter topic okay dlt this is how i am giving actually okay so then what about the key the record has the key okay and what about the value of course the record has the value so we already created the producer record super simple and if you want to pass the header information as well we can do this actually okay so this is just given idea okay so now let's create a sender record let's send a record create producer record and here this is correlation metadata i am going to use the key there is no key oh yeah okay key okay so now we have created the sender record so here let's convert the receiver record to producer uh, sender record actually var sender record is equals to sender record 
so let's pass the receiver record here okay so now the receiver record is converted to a sender record okay super at this point it's very simple this dot sender send here we have to send the publisher type actually okay so since we have to send the publisher type i'm going to use mono dot just okay because we have only one record dot sr that's it super simple okay this guy will be giving us the flex of receive um, the, the result, sender result actually in our case there is no flex actually so we are going to have only one so i am going to say next okay so give me the mono that's what i am saying okay so if i say return right oops if i say re return now it will give us the type mono of sender result of k actually okay so this is what we want hey guys let's continue um here we have to create one more method this is going to be a simple utility type method and we can also keep this in a separate class if we want but i'm going to use here okay so just for demo purposes okay so public and uh, this is going to be a function of which will be accepting mono of receiver record of kv types and uh, it will be returning mono of void actually okay so this is what it is and we are going to call this uh, record processing error handler okay some kind of a utility method okay so let me do this okay so now return we are going to accept a mono and we are going to do a retry first based on the retry spec given to us okay so based on the retry spec also remember that the retry right they would um, they would have built any way they like whoever is going to call this or use this class okay so they could have used a fixed delay or indefinite or backup whatever they want to do they would have done actually okay so they are giving some retry to us based on that we are going to retry okay so then what will happen is uh, I'm going to say do on error as usual and I'm going to simply get the message and print it okay so here one important um, thing here is when the retry exhausted right we will be getting retry um, exhausted exception okay that is what we will be getting also whoever built the retry spec so we cannot guarantee that they would have used on retry exhausted throw and all okay so they would have not done this actually if they have done this that's good but if they have if they have not done that we will not be getting the actual root cause instead we will be getting the retry exhausted error okay so uh, it is our responsibility to check that actually here so there is a um one class uh, sorry one operator which is which is like a map for example this map will convert one type to another type right that's what the map right similarly we have on error map which will be converting one uh, exception uh, one throwable to another throwable something like that okay so here we are going to check if it's an exhausted um, that retry error okay unfortunately we cannot directly check like this because that is a package private thing okay so we are going to get a throwable and we are going to check the actual cause is instance of record processing exception that's what we are checking okay if it's that exception that's what we are, we are checking if yes then give me the actual record processing exception that's what we are going to say okay so throwable get cause okay so now we will be getting a record processing exception in the pipeline okay so now we can continue so now on error resume we are going to check if it's a record processing exception class then execute this the fallback whatever we are going to give here okay the idea here is this utility method will do the retry for others if things are not working well it will automatically send that to dead letter topic and it will acknowledge the record okay so that is how i am trying to implement okay so now i'm going to get the exception 
and now the exception contains the record if you remember right so this is what we have done actually so we are going to call this produce method so this dot produce ex get record so okay okay this is because we need a kv type and the exception contains this okay we have some more work to do so uh, you cannot create exception like kv type something like this okay so things will we cannot do like this actually so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to change this to kv type because we are the one who created this exception so it should be we can type cast like this okay it should work so now things should be happy and we have to add this suppress warning unchecked okay okay so this should be good still a little problem okay it's kv type is mainly because okay so we have to give the fallback the fallback is mono of receiver record okay so okay let me do this first we are going to produce this once we have produced okay now we can actually acknowledge that record now so it, we can say then as part of the then we can say mono okay so mono from runnable we can simply say okay we can simply say um, x dot get record receiver offset acknowledge okay something like that so if i am closing this the honor resume right so i think at this point it's still complaining mainly because we need it needs a mono of void actually okay so hopefully this is clear just to quickly explain we have one reactive dead letter topic producer okay so we have a generic one produce method people directly want to use they can use actually okay or people if they want to use the, our utility method record processing error handler they can also use so this class will be um, this instance will be doing the retry and it will automatically produce for the caller okay so that is the idea actually okay probably we can also could accept the retry spec as part of this method instead of keeping this as an instance variable but again this these are like the small small changes mm, clean up you can do if you want okay so this is fine now let's create one more class for which will be the service layer to represent the service class okay so we are i'm going to call this order event processor okay so let's keep it like that this is should be this should be super simple actually okay so here we will be uh, injecting that the reactive dead letter topic producer actually reactive dead letter topic producer okay so here we want the string type okay so dead letter topic producer let's keep it like that let's assume that it will be given to us via the constructor so when we use spring we will we can auto wire all these things okay so okay so here uh, i am going to do the processing i'm going to say mono of wire which will be returning that then process and i'm going to get okay let me okay so receiver record string string record okay so what are the processing we have been doing here right so this is what we are going to do so let's copy this guy and paste it here so that's it super simple stuff so let me call this record okay so now let me also add the logger so for logger log logger factory get logger order even processor class okay so this is good okay so now our processing is going to be i'm going to keep things simple so r dot key ends with okay so if it ends with the five so every five right if it's 5 15 25 i'm going to throw error actually okay this is what i'm planning to do nothing else 
so throw new runtime exception so processing exception actually okay something like that i'm going to get rid of this index all those stuff it doesn't make sense let's remove all those things here okay so let's keep it like that and the things are going fine we can simply acknowledge here okay so there is no issue so this is our processing okay okay so we no longer going to do this all those stuff actually okay so everything is going to be super simple okay however uh, we want to ideally we have to um, give the record processing exception so i am going to use on error map as usual here so here what i'm going to do is that while processing if i face any error it could be um, maybe it could be anything actually database is down remote web service is down um, it could be anything so if i get any exception i am going to convert that to a record processing exception here and i'm going to pass the record and i'm going to pass the exception details okay so oops record okay so oh there has to be a throwable sorry about that okay change that to throwable okay so now this guy should be happy okay so then we are going to do the transform that is the transform is to call any of the utility methods if you have something like this okay so here this is where i am going to use the dead letter dead letter topic producer okay so this dot dead letter topic producer dot uh, record processing error handler so we can get rid of this okay basically this is my processing okay during this phase if i can if i have any issues okay the red letter topic producer you handle this that's it okay we are basically delegating that all the the retry sending it to red letter everything we we are going to ask this guy to handle it for us okay so this is what we are doing here okay so now things are looking good now let's come here and let's remove this guy now let's do some cleanup here okay so here i'm going to create a few methods you can probably imagine this something like our spring configuration class okay where we will be creating all these beans okay so but this is just to give you an idea so here i'm creating a reactive dead letter topic producer actually okay so this is going to be a string key string value type okay so dead letter topic producer so now here we are going to create return new reactive dead letter topic producer and if you remember we have to give the kafka sender and the retry spec give both actually okay so now in order to create the kafka sender right so i'm going to simply um, get this to give us the idea okay i'm going to simply copy this guy and paste it here so when you use spring all these properties can be auto wired as you know okay so we can simply get this all this information also we want a string serializer okay this is not a consumer it's a producer so we want a serializer serializer so everything looks good here so string string type okay and we also have to create a sender so sender equals kafka sender dot create pass the options okay so now we can use the sender and we have to give the retry spec we can simply say retry fixed delay i'm going to use two retries uh, duration of seconds one okay this is our um, dead letter topic producer okay let's also create uh, the kafka receiver the same stuff i'm going to create as a separate method to um, avoid confusion nothing else so kafka receive kafka receiver of type string string kafka receiver okay let's keep it like that i'm going to copy all these things copy this guy and paste it here so 
data okay so this is our kafka receiver why this guy is complaining is mainly because of string string okay okay you know what let me cut this and give it here okay so this guy should be happy okay so this is a deserializer and deserializer again if you if you use spring right this are like will be part of the configuration class and we can we can inject all these properties okay so there is a way so no worries so we can get rid of this actually okay so we have to simply connect all the things here nothing else so so var okay so let's get the dead letter topic producer is equals dead letter topic producer okay let's call this then var okay processor the order event processor is equals new order event processor pass that dead letter producer okay then var receiver kafka receiver okay so we have created okay now we have all the the beans the objects okay everything whatever we need okay so now receiver dot receive now this will be giving us the flux of receiver record log you can remove this we do not need it now i'm going to process all this record one after another okay so i'm going to use processor process and that's it if you see that's it okay guys so finally we are going to test whatever we have done so far okay so please ensure that the order events topic is there and if you remember we also need to have dead letter topic okay so dlt ensure that those topics are present okay so now in my case i just created as you saw okay so we did not touch anything in our producer actually so ensure that okay ensure that this um we have data so in my case i just created so i have created all the 100 events okay so now let me go to the kafka consumer so let me run this quickly and see how it's going to behave if you see the okay so we are actually logging if you notice everything is going fine except the fours those fives okay you are seeing some kind of delay right okay so everything else goes fine all the fives are we are we are it, there is a slowness actually we can see okay so as and when the the, the failing uh, sorry as and when the five occurs so we are getting the when it fails we are so showing that 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 log okay so this is good actually okay so now you might be seeing this it's it comes from the producer the dead, dead letter producer right only for the very first time when it's trying to produce that time it prints its configuration okay so no worries so one two three four four one two three four worked five failed so that would have gone to dead letter okay if you also notice there is some kind of a delay if you see 46 after that we have 48 so two seconds delay because of the retry okay after that everything pro everything was processed super fast again there is a two seconds delay okay then super fast two seconds delay something like that okay so now this way right you will not be losing the data okay so i assume that everything would have gone to dead letter topic now let's let me stop the producer sorry let me start the stop the consumer okay now let's go and check uh, the topic let's come back to the terminal okay so kafka console consumer bootstrap server topic so our topic is order events dlt okay dead letter topic so we want to see from beginning okay so if i hit enter okay so we are getting order 5 15 25 so all the failed orders right uh, so they are all present in the dead letter topic let's come back to our ide now we saw that we have those failed events in the dead letter topic okay so what we can do is basically that error happened mainly because of the bug in the code me as a developer i have introduced some bug in the code because which because of which some orders failed they went into dead letter topic some orders were processed successfully okay now i realized my bug and i have i am fixing my bug now okay or maybe some some external service was down now it came back up okay so it could be any scenario okay 
the issue is fixed now that's what i'm trying to say okay now let's go back to the kafka consumer as you know the kafka receiver can subscribe to more than one topic right so now we are going to say order events and order events that little topic subscribe to both of these that's what we are trying to say here okay now let me run this and see what will happen here so now i am able to process all those failed events successfully now okay so they are all working fine and all those orders were processed successfully it's okay so let me stop this this is great right now you might be having one question that uh, what if the record fails again okay, the record came from the dead letter topic if it fails again what should i do should i be producing another even to dead letter topic actually it's up to us how we want to do okay so for me what i'm thinking here is the record right it contains the information the topic from where it came so assuming we all follow certain standard for the topic name using that we can see the message came from the dead letter topic okay if it has come from the dead letter topic we do not have to produce that back to um, the dead letter topic actually okay instead do not acknowledge okay that is enough actually okay so this is what i would suggest also it is not like you have to always consume from the dead letter topic as well okay this is just an idea for maybe you can simply consume only this topic okay the dead letter topic can be kept for like manual intervention etc we have been talking about various options for error handling it all based on the assumption that we get the record and during our processing it fails so whatever we did so far it is something similar to 500 internal server error okay it's something similar to that okay so what about something similar to 400 bad request okay that is if you are unable to deserialize the message okay so here we received the request the request is good during processing we get we get failures okay we get error okay what about if the the message itself it's a bad message okay so that is you were expecting order event message but someone by mistake has produced user registration event that message into the order event topic okay someone did some mistake okay so okay so this is called poison pill actually that is when you try to consume that message you will get it but you cannot decode that message okay you cannot deserialize this okay so things will blow up so the kafka server and the receiver right it will stop so you will retry again you will get try to get the message it will give us the same message things will blow up and again it will stop so no matter how many times we retry we will end up having the same record okay so it will keep on happening in a loop actually okay first let, let's try to uh, uh, replicate the problem actually let's try to see the problem first then let's discuss the solution so for that i have created a separate package section 14 and i have copied these two classes from section 8 and pasted here okay nothing else okay so nothing fancy here no error handling so we are going to assume that we we do not have any issues in our processing okay so we expect good messages from the kafka broker okay so okay so the point here is okay so the kafka consumer is going to assume that we will be getting integer messages okay so i'm going to keep this as a integer deserializer class okay so our expectation is all the messages are integer type that's it okay super simple stuff so i don't want to keep this as object object let's keep this as an string integer type so everything changes changes to string integer so that's it actually super simple let's not forget to change the port 9092 okay okay so now uh, let's go to the producer actually okay the producer let me change the port to 9092 okay so now i'm going to change that to flex.range 
uh, one two two let's keep it like that just a two okay i'm going to produce two messages um, into our uh, the topic okay two messages will be like a string type i do not want the existing messages in the topic to mess up our demo so let me delete this and uh, let me recreate this from scratch one more time order events okay so now let me run the producer to produce these uh, two messages first okay two messages got produced okay now uh, we realize that oh i need a string sorry integer message so we are going to use integer serializer okay integer serializer from apache kafka okay so integer serializer and since we say that we want the integer message right and the key can be string type okay that's fine so remember that this is okay the string value okay now i have to change that to integer type let's not forget that okay and uh, now this will change that to okay this will change that to integer okay so it's an integer type so we are giving flux of integer that is what we are passing actually here okay you're getting right so what about this type this this is a uh, string integer actually okay now we can produce like 100 messages okay so let me run this okay so now we have produced 100 messages using the integer type so now let's go to the kafka consumer we are expecting integer message everything looks good so let's run this and see so it connects to the broker and if you see it throws an exception saying that hey you were expecting an integer but i don't think that that was an integer that's what it throws okay so uh, it says that it's not able to deserialize the the value we have okay so actually if you scroll up it, it the error happens in the even loop level okay unexpected exception so if you try to retry again things will fail okay if you try to restart retry again it will fail okay so it will kind of it will keep on happening okay so as i said earlier th things are not even coming here actually okay the things are happening here itself the things are failing okay so this is called a poison pill message so how can i recover from this actually hey guys in the previous lecture we saw the demo of the python pill message so let's see how we can recover from that actually okay so this is basically very simple if you notice if you go to the integer deserializer right if you notice so this is the source code actually uh, if you if you notice all the deserializer are like this they're like very simple actually okay and there is no try catch block here that is if we are expecting things to be in the integer format actually okay if things are not like that okay if we cannot deserialize we, we are we are throwing this exception okay so this is why we are getting that okay this is great so our idea here is to what we can do here is we can create our own deserializer as simply extends this or maybe we can make it more generic actually so we are going to do some kind of a try catch okay so when we get the serialization ex exception right so what we can do is we can simply acknowledge accept the record and uh, move on with the, the default value something like that actually so that is the idea either we can create our own deserializer or spring provides own deserializer okay so a simple wrapper okay so we can do that actually we can use that so let's go to the kafka consumer okay so what we are going to do is that we are going to create a we are going to go with the let's say spring solution instead of creating our own deserializer okay to save some time okay so it's called error handling deserializer okay so spring provides this okay very simple stuff so it's an error handling deserializer for uh, integer okay this is what i want so this is a wrapper for that actually okay so let's call this error handling deserializer and we are going to create a return okay actually var deserializer okay so new error handling deserializer so here 
new integer deserializer okay so okay now if you take a look at the deserializer right okay so set failed deserialization function okay so we can also set up some function if you want some kind of a callback basically it it gives you it gives you that failed deserialization information okay and you can provide integer value basically it's a fallback if you want to give so okay so give me the info okay the if i get the info what i'm going to do with that is i'm going to simply say uh I'm going to simply say log error failed record something like that I'm going to say like this okay and I'm going to say a new string because the information contains all the information actually the, the byte array it, it, it will give us the data okay it will also give us the ta topic headers all those information so I'm going to print this okay the return value right i'm going to give the fallback value the fallback can be anything maybe whatever you want to say we can say for me the fallback is minus 10000 okay just i'm saying okay so now let's return the return the deserializer okay okay now we no longer need this we are not going to use this okay now we are going to use um, add D, oh, D value okay with the value deserializer is going to be our error handling deserializer okay so this is what I have done okay so basically we do not want this actually even if you give the things will still work because this will override that okay so this is what we are using so use integer deserializer when you use this if things are going to fail just use this to recover that's what we are saying so we simply here we pass one integer deserializer um, in the constructor right now if you check the source code if you scroll down for the deserialize function okay so whatever we have passed via constructor they try to decode or deserialize using that object okay if things are failing right so that time they kind of recover from there or um, the exception by using the fallback okay that that's exactly what they have done so this is something like we can create it ourselves super simple stuff okay so now let me run this so the, those python pill messages they are still there okay so now if you see we record from there if you move if you go to the top right okay there are two failed records order one order two we produced these two so okay so we cannot recover from there because it was a string message okay so now uh, we gave we g return this fallback and uh, we acknowledge the message then we moved on with the the indigent messages actually okay so these are like bad messages so you cannot do anything with that actually okay so that's what we have done also if you want to uh, produce that message to some other topic maybe you can do this as part of this of um, the error handling here okay you can also send to some other topic if you want okay so we can do that so the thing is but why are we is emitting my uh, minus 10,000 so what should I do with the minus 10,000 here so here we can also do a filtering that if it's minus 10,000 do not process and again you can see that you can also do some kind of handling that if it's a fallback message do not process something like that we can always do actually so far we have been talking about consumer side challenges actually consumer side has more challenges once you receive the event you have to process maybe you have to make a database call remote web service call during that time you might be facing issues so it kind of makes sense okay at the consumer side facing more challenges okay but what about the producer side do we have any challenges here what about error handling at the producer side the good thing with the producer side right um, it's we do not have lot more challenges as we had in the consumer side that is here you have to create the sender record if 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 you if you have issues in creating sender record that you can always do a retry as usual you can create sender record okay so here it's not about kafka so this is completely about your application actually so you have to create sender record once you create the sender record then you have to give it to the kafka sender right so this is where we might be facing challenges. What if the topic is not present? What if I am not getting acknowledgement? 
what if the broker itself is down so what what will happen in this case so we might be having a lot of questions like this interestingly the kafka client library does all the heavy lifting for us it will do a lot of retry behind the scene so that is what i'm going to demo now so for that the very first thing what i'm going to do is that first i'm going to delete the order even topic actually i have already deleted but please ensure that you are deleting the topic okay once the topic is deleted i am going to create the order even topic okay with the config minimum in sync replicas 3 basically i am creating um yeah creating this order even topic with the minimum 3 in sync replicas only then i can get acknowledgement otherwise i will not get acknowledgement i am creating like this okay if you notice I, I i my replica itself replication factory itself is one but i am saying that i want minimum 3 in sync replicas okay only then i need acknowledgement i'm saying like this okay so in this case i will not get that acknowledgement so this is what i'm trying to simulate on top of that i'm also going to bring my kafka broker down okay so let it be down it's fine so let me try now let's see we are going to see issues one by one now if you see it says that i couldn't establish the connection and if you notice it also keeps on retrying if you check the okay so now let me come here and bring the application sorry kafka broker up if you notice okay now the error is different okay now the error is different it says that hey not enough replicas i'm trying to produce but i'm not getting enough acknowledgement so this is the error so it has not produced any record results so far okay so now i'm also oops oh I, okay let me go back okay so let me paste this here okay let me copy this guy if you notice it, it keeps on retrying okay so let me delete this what will happen in this case if you delete it will you will be getting unknown topic etc okay so let me paste this and create this topic now now if you notice it's super fast okay it's super fast and it's it starts from one if you notice it starts producing record actually sorry guys it's very fast i couldn't show that okay okay so it keeps on producing the records okay so now let's bring this down one more time 4116 okay up to that it has produced okay so i brought that server down again i'm getting error now let me bring this up okay so if i scroll up super fast okay 4117 it starts from there actually okay so the clients aside the producer side yeah it's kind of more resilient if you think just to be safe can i add retry here yeah you can always retry just to be safe if you want that is one thing also on top of that in our case we had used one single node broker actually okay and i had used only one replica for my topic but in the real life we would be using a cluster with multiple nodes and you have to have enough replicas i also want you to be aware of certain important properties at the producer side so producer configuration so it prints all the properties right so which is good so now if you see the number of retries it's basically integer at max value okay so so does it mean uh, it will keep on retraining forever like 2 billion times actually uh, yes but there is also another property called a delivery timeout of millisecond so we can also control this saying that so basically uh, by the default values 2 minutes okay we can also adjust this value accordingly okay based on our requirement
okay so maybe you do not want to retry forever you think that it's unnecessary so you can control this actually so when you use delivery sorry when you use delivery timeout right um, that basically means that you can keep on retrying up to this after that it doesn't make any sense that's what you are saying actually okay so you can increase hey guys let's quickly summarize whatever we had done in this section in this section we were mostly talking about error handling we will be attempting to handle or do all the processing in the receiver pipeline itself and when things are failing so this will cause the kafka receiver to disconnect from the kafka broker and when you try to do retry again it will try to contact kafka broker something like that okay so my suggestion would be to uh, keep the processing in a separate pipeline okay as we have done in, in this code in this yeah in this section actually okay because even if you read even if you do retry and when you ask for the event right so you are going to get the same message anyway and you already have the data you already have the record so we can create a separate processing pipeline and there in within that which uh, within that you can do um, the retry okay so this is the idea so in my examples i had used mono.just either you can do that or in the real life when we get the record we might be making a database call or maybe we might be calling another remote web service whatever it is okay so as part of the response in the reactive world right those will be a publisher type okay so you can build the, uh, the processing pipeline yourself okay so when the error occurs either you can do retries or simply accept the record and move on something like that okay or we can also produce that message to the dead letter topic as we had uh, done in this section okay so that we can consume that later or we can look into that messages manually okay so this is another idea okay so far whatever we had done right it's all based on the assumption that the messages are good we are facing issues um, in the during our processing okay so that is the assumption also one interesting thing is the spring team they does they do not have uh, the reactive dead letter topic producer actually okay so at this time of creating this course they do not have one maybe when you watch this lecture later maybe they would have added something at that point okay at that time okay so if the spring provides that use that okay otherwise we can you can also come up with the something like whatever we had done in this um, section actually okay it's no big deal super simple stuff okay okay so now what if the message itself is bad okay there is no processing issue the message itself it's a bad message so in that case it's called poison pill message so it's very difficult to recover from there okay so the we have to kind of use the error handling deserializer to to get rid of that okay to come up to use some fallback to recover from that and we have to accept the message and move on to the next message okay so it, it, this is similar to the 400 bad request you, you cannot process it actually okay so that's it so you simply move on to the next message actually hey guys in this section we are going to talk about kafka transaction before that let's talk about database transaction when we say database transaction this is what will come to our mind and it's easy to explain as well mike wants to transfer ten dollars to sam it's a single request which came from mike okay let's assume so for that we have to deduct ten dollars from mike's account and we have to credit ten dollars to sam's account so for a single request we have to do multiple operations okay so database transaction is a set of operations which you want them to be executed as a single atomic operation either they are all updated or none of them is updated we do not want any intermediate state okay so if these two are successful we will be committing otherwise we will be rolling back okay so this is database transaction and we know this now let's talk about the kafka transaction so far we have been seeing uh, kafka consumer application and the kafka producer application as a two different application 
that is one application will either consume or that application will produce but sometimes some application could be both producer and consumer for example some application would want to consume events from one topic will do some processing then it will produce output messages to another topic we call this read process write application so if you take this scenario let's say someone has initiated the money transfer request so all these events are coming into the transfer request topic this is a kafka topic so we have developed one application this application there are like multiple service layers okay so this up this service will be consuming these events they will be doing some processing then if things are looking good then we will be producing couple of events to another topic called transaction event basically we will do some validation after the validation this application will be like yeah i have validated i approve this okay we can deduct money from a1 and we can credit money to the a2 so it will kind of produce two different events to another topic okay so it does the read process right here we want the whole the process right the whole read process right we want them uh, to be executed as a single atomic operation okay so we do not want any intermediate state something something like i was able to read i produced one event but when i was about to produce the, uh, the second event something uh, went terribly wrong okay we do not want this or i was able to produce two events but i was not able to acknowledge this okay so we do not want anything like that okay we want everything to be completed as a one single atomic operation like reading producing and acknowledging everything also please do note that this is just an example okay it doesn't have to be always like read process right instead this application right maybe it might want to produce a set of events periodically those set of events have to be kind of transactional in a way that either all the set of events either they all produced or none of them is produced something like that okay again it doesn't have to be one single topic okay maybe this application might want to produce multiple events and multiple topics as a one single transaction okay this 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 scenario could be anything so if we take a look at our pseudo code this is how it will look like so get one record from the bo broker process the record when we process the record we end up having multiple sender records to produce okay the sender record could be one then the list might contain one or hundred it does not really matter okay we have multiple records to send okay then we send all the record once this is done then we receive a record is acknowledged okay so we want all these things okay either they all should be successful commit otherwise roll back okay so this is exactly what we want hey guys in the next few lectures we are going to build a very very simple money transfer application to understand kafka transaction so we would be developing one simple application for that we will also be using Kafka console producer to produce um, the money transfer request in this format. This is the key. This is the from account. This is the to account. This is the amount we would like to transfer. Something like that using Kafka console producer. So this application will be consuming these events. It will be doing some validation. Then it will uh, emit events to another topic. Okay. Maybe we can call this transfer events topic okay and we will be using kafka console consumer to see if you are receiving those events actually so uh, in this case right if a from a we would like to transfer ten dollars to b so a minus 10 b plus 10 similarly m minus 20 n plus 20 so this is what we would like to see okay we are going to do as part of the validation right uh, what i'm going to do is that i'm going to do some kind of hard coding in a way that if the key is five basically if it fails validation and uh, we will be rejecting the request okay something like that if the key is six uh, we will be emitting these events but when we acknowledge we got some failure something like that also this this is not about the application actually it's about how we are going to connect various things together here to make the transaction work okay so this is where the challenge is now let's come back to ide 
I have created a separate package section 15 so here I'm going to create few classes okay so I'm going to call this transfer event consumer so in our application we need a consumer actually this application is more of a read and write type application okay so this application is both consumer and it's the it's also a producer so it's a transfer event consumer okay then we are also going to have a transfer event processor so this is what we are go this is what um, is going to do the processing actually Tra transfer event processor okay and I'm also going to create another actually I'm going to keep this as a record okay Java 17 record but you can create a simple um, class actually so just to hold some information here okay so let's come to this later so the transfer event consumer right so here we are going to create uh, first let me create the logger actually so logger log logger factory get logger transfer event consumer class okay then since it's a consumer i want the the kafka receiver actually so kafka receiver it's going to be a string type string type for now so let's call this receiver okay so that's it let me create the constructor actually okay so now I'm going to create one private method here which will be uh, giving us the transfer event from the receiver record okay so to transfer event so receiver record of string string record okay so okay so here I'm going to var array record dot value okay and we are going to split okay. if you remember this is what I said so it will be like in this format a comma b comma 10 something like that okay so if you this is the value if you split this is the from account this is the to account this is the amount again um, no worries this is we can keep this simple and we get we are also going to assume that this is the format will be correct okay so our focus is not this our focus is uh, doing the transaction actually so okay so now we are going to extract the the from account to account the amount and we are going to put it in the transfer event so for the transfer event right so I'm going to create string key again I am using record but if you are not using Java 17 just make this as a class and any whatever I do right just create a private fields okay and create getter setter that's it nothing much okay so I want key I want the from account I want the to account and I also do want the amount okay then I am going to add one runnable and i'm going to call this acknowledge something like that okay now let's come back here okay so we can return new transfer event so first thing is key so record dot key actually then the from account is error zero the two account is array of one then it's array two okay so then we need the runnable so for that i'm going to create a two simple method i do not i like to make it as a method to so that it will look neat and easily readable okay so receiver record string string record acknowledge okay so basically just we are acknowledging nothing else and i'm going to copy this paste it one more time and i'm going to make this as a fail so which will be always failing so here this is how i'm simulating actually okay oops 
throw new runtime exception okay error while acknowledging we can keep it like that okay so since we are not using this here we know actually we don't need this okay so this is good so now we are going to keep this okay runnable like this so here we are going to check record dot key dot equals equals if it's a if it's six this is what we said right if it's six we are going to do this actually okay so if it's six we want the fail runnable otherwise we want the acknowledging runnable okay so that's it and we would like to pass the runnable here finally let's create the the public method which will be uh, used by the other classes okay so let's call this receive method so return this dot receiver dot receive which will be giving us the flux of um, receiver record we are going to use transfer event to convert to transfer event okay that's it super simple stuff so for me we can use a simple do on next to log okay in this lecture let's work on the transfer event processor so i'm going to simply copy these two and i'm going to paste it here okay i'm going to change the class name for the logger here and here we will be receiving kafka sender not the receiver okay so let's call this sender and let's generate the constructor so here we are going to have one public uh, method so i'm going to keep this as wide now so the method name will be process here we will be receiving the flux of transfer event okay so let me import this i'm going to call this flux and here um we have to return something okay for the for the time being it's going to be wide okay so then we have to validate right so private um void validate this record okay so i'm going to assume that i'm going to get one transfer event one by one okay something like that and if i'm going to see the return whether it's valid or not okay so for that uh, when you are oops yeah return okay so when you actually get this event you might want to make a database call or something like this to really um, to just query if the user has enough information or not something like that okay so i'm going to simply say mono dot just event here but as part of the database call you will you can build the reactive pipeline okay so the same thing okay so then we are going to check if filter so in our case if the, the account is five um it does not have enough money okay so if the key five does not have enough money okay does not have money to transfer something like that okay so let because that's what we have said so let's keep it like that so if e e dot key equals five actually if it's not equals five we are going to okay so instead of saying not here i'm going to say predicate not okay 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 so if it's not five then proceed further that's what we are saying actually okay if it's a five or if the, the condition is not met that is if the user does not have enough money or something like this then this will be empty so i'm going to say switch if empty if it's empty okay so what are we going to do so if it's empty then we do not want um we do not have to initiate the transfer okay so instead we can simply acknowledge actually so event dot acknowledge we can simply call this that's it here we acknowledge this record is mainly because once we know for sure that um, we are not going to take any action for that event right so then we simply acknowledge so that we do not have to deal with this record once again okay that is why so uh, i'm going to print some log so that when it rejects right we will know immediately so i'm going to keep this as a do first 
so as part of the do first runnable i'm going to log this log.info fails validation something like that and i am going to keep provide the event.key okay so which one fails validation okay something like that we can see um, this is mainly because of transfer event i have to give transfer event like this so that this guy oh, okay i have to give this so that this guy will be happy once this is validated then what we have to do is we have to come up with the sender records uh, so that we can send okay so for that i'm going to create a separate method to create sender records private void to sender record something like that here i am going to receive the transfer event um, for which we have to create the sender record okay so to create the sender record we need to create the producer record so let's create two producer record one is for credit event the other one is for the debit event so new producer record okay so here we okay we are going to use the transaction events right this is what we had said okay transaction events um then the okay it, it wants key and value okay the key is going to be our event dot key we can use the same key and the value is okay let me do sorry let me do this okay the value is going to be um they are going to use string format actually so i'm going to use like this dot formatted okay so even dot um so we have to uh, credit money to the two account okay so even dot two even dot amount basically this will print give the the two account this is the amount so this is what i'm saying nothing much okay then pr2 transaction events this is minus we are going to debit so we are going to deduct money from the from account actually okay so then once you have the pr uh, producer records then we have to create the sender records so our sr1 is equal to sender record dot create producer record one then producer record one dot key we can use the same thing but we can use whatever you like just i'm using this for example okay then for pr2 pr2 this is sr2 okay using the producer record 2 we create the sender record 2 okay so once this is done it's super simple okay return flux dot just sr1 sr2 okay so i'm returning flex here but you can also return a list or maybe you can probably uh, we can make uh, some calls here so which will give us the publisher type because of that i'm doing this but you can return whatever the producer records in any form okay in, in maybe like a list or flex okay it's completely up to us so now let's come here uh, i'm going to say flex here i'm going to get uh, streaming transfer event so i'm going to do the validation first so this dot um, validate first step is validate whether if i can do the transfer or not something like that okay since it returns a monotype I, i'm going to change that to concatenate map because i'm going to do one after the other something like that okay sequential one by one something like that then the next step is to uh, we can produce the sender record and at this point right we can start making the transaction okay we can send all those record so before i okay um i don't want to create the sender record here it is for a reason let me create or let me work on the send the transaction okay let's do the send transaction so in the in the send transaction i am going to um, get the transfer event okay I'm going to get the transfer event okay so here what i'm going to do is that here i am going to get the flux of sender records okay we can call this sender records whatever we want sender records this dot to sender records event okay because the idea here is for this is for one single event i have multiple sender records so this is why i'm trying to call this here instead of this here actually okay but Mm, yeah 
we can also do here that doesn't really matter but i thought of keeping this here actually okay so here i'm getting all the center record flex okay um then once this is done right we can have we can create a transaction manager so this dot sender dot transaction manager okay so here we are creating the instance of the transaction manager so now if you see manager dot begin if you see manager dot there are some methods like begin transaction commit transaction about so these are the things we would like to do basically you have to begin the transaction then you have to tell what you want to do okay if you think that everything is going uh, successful everything is success then you can commit if, if you if you ever face any issue then you can abort okay super simple stuff as you see okay so let's begin the transaction as um, in case okay if you noticed they are all reactive type actually okay sorry about that okay they are all reactive type okay so begin and uh, you have to give what you want to do here actually okay okay so in the within the then basically you have to give the publisher okay so which what are you going to do so we are going to use the sender to send all the sender records whatever we have okay whatever i'm having here i'm going to send everything that is what i'm saying okay let me write like this okay here okay so once you send then what 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 do you want to do okay if they are all sent successfully then concatenate with okay concatenate with uh, i would like to acknowledge if if i am able to send everything successfully then i can uh, i can acknowledge that's it right so since i have to give a publisher i'm going to say mono dot from runnable even dot acknowledge okay okay so what else if this is what i want to wanted to do sending the records then acknowledging if this if these two they are all successful then concatenate with manager dot commit that's it i'm committing the transaction okay that is what i'm saying so let me do this like this okay now i'll i'll f um, we can fix this okay um, so then what else in case of any error first i would like to print the error okay i would like to see what's really going on log dot error okay so we are going to say actually x dot get message let's keep it like that okay so now let's say on error resume okay so in case of error first i'm going to print it then in case of error i am going to do manager dot abort transaction okay so this is what i'm saying just to be clear one more time here once the begin the publisher is completed once it emits complete signal then we will be subscribing to this actually okay so as part of this publisher we are emitting records we are acknowledging and we are trying to commit during this phase if any error occur we will be directly aborting the on error resume uh, handle okay so this is what I, um, we are doing nothing much so this guy is mainly because okay so here we are having a flux of records right flux of sender records so if you do send right um, we will be getting for each and every sender record we will be getting sender result so this is basically um, a flex say but it's actually expecting um, mono so we have to say then many so this guy is happy now okay um, that's it but my only concern now here is if i am going to give one event let's say transfer money from a to b ten dollar something like that i don't want multiple result i want only one single result saying that it's a result it's successful okay since we have to emit multiple records it gives us multiple sender results actually ideally in the ideal world what we could do is that we have to build our own result object basically we can collect all the sender results okay something like this collect list and using the list of sender result we can build our own result object which we can return okay but i really do not want to go build a result object because super our demo is super simple so which you can do actually for me give me the last object that's what i'm trying to say okay i don't want multiple result 
if there are multiple results just give me the last one that is what i'm saying okay nothing much so at this point right this guy is a mono it's no longer flex so this guy can can be then okay okay so this is also happy now okay cool let's return this and this is the important stuff once this is done then nothing else to do here that's it so let's put it in the pipeline so here at this point here if you see what we are get what we'll be getting here if we are getting a transfer event right so we have to give the transfer event uh, to this guy to trans send transaction okay since this is this returns another mono i'm going to use concatenation map as usual and that's it this is also done so we can return this guy and we should be happy then we can create um, the transfer demo class this is basically for uh, connecting everything creating configuration etc okay so let's like start your main so first i would like to create all the the kafka receiver sender configuration everything here so let me go to the section 13 kafka consumer so i'm going to copy this guy and i'm going to paste it here so um here it can be localhost string string demo group everything looks good okay the topic name will be in our case it's a transfer request that's what we have said right let's keep it like that and uh, yeah this is good we also need the kafka sender so again i'm going there uh, here we can copy from the dead letter topic and we can slightly modify this this is fine okay so let's call this kafka sender of string string type kafka sender and we do not need this guy let's return this actually okay so that's it so this configuration kafka receiver is going to subscribe to this topic and it which will be consuming all the request then the kafka sender is going to emit all those records in a, using the transactional manager right so if you are going to use transaction in the producer side right so we have to give this property actually so producer config transactional id config okay so each and every instance it's supposed to have one tran unique transactional id okay so i'm going to give something unique since we are running only one single application i'm going to call this money transfer but each and every application is supposed to have one unique id okay now let's go come to our public static void main here we let's try to connect everything okay so first let's create that transfer event consumer new transfer event consumer this is going to accept kafka receiver okay so then var transfer event processor new transfer event processor this guy is going to accept kafka sender okay so let's create that as well okay so now we have created these two um, instance okay so the transfer event consumer we are going to call the receive method which will be giving us the list of all the transfer events so we are going to use transform to send this as a whole flux to this oh sorry not this actually sorry transfer event processor uh, process okay so we'll be giving that to process uh, method actually okay then as part of the do on next here we will be getting a, we will be getting the flux of sender result actually so here i'm going to say uh, log dot oh i don't have the logger here so let me copy the logger so let's paste it here transfer demo let's put this here okay so here we are going to say um, we can print the correlation metadata right okay so um, transfer success for 
or correlation metadata okay so then what else in case of error let's also log that error let's say log dot error x dot get message then subscribe that's it super simple stuff before the demo i would like to add one small thing here um, basically i need this so that i can demo certain things better actually okay so there will be always some last minute change in the real life okay so i expect that so okay um what i'm going to do is that i will be sending the records i'm going to delay the acknowledgement okay intentionally just for the demo purpose so that we can see certain things actually nothing else um duration of seconds one okay then we will be bringing this stuff okay something like that okay so yeah now let's come to our workspace here i have created a 07 transaction data sketch on one simple file so we are going to type a, a bunch of commands so i thought of creating them first here okay so first we need to create a topic so you know so let's do this here the very first topic is um, transfer request so the topic ensure that it's there okay the next one is uh, transaction events actually okay the transaction events topic let's create that as well then um, we have developed the application right so it has to um, we need some kind of a producer to produce the transfer request so for that i'm going to use the console producer actually there should be okay let me take the console producer and paste it here so that here i'm going to replace the hello world with the transfer request here this is good now we want the console consumer um, let me copy this console consumer so this is to check the transaction events okay so to see we are going to check whether if you are getting those transaction events actually so let me copy this and paste it here and i'm not interested in the offset we, we don't need offset um key is good i'm not worried about the group name and all okay so i, I would like to add this property okay isolation level okay so read committed just do exactly as i do uh, we have been talked about this I, I know okay so i'm going to explain that so but let's add this property okay if i so so far we have not specified right if you do not specify that basically means it's read and committed okay so if you want read committed it has to be explicitly mentioned like this that's why i'm doing this but what it means we are going to talk about it after that demo okay or during the demo then from beginning if you want okay so then i'm going to copy this and paste it one more time i'm also going to create another console consumer without this okay so basically we will be seeing a small a slight difference in the results okay with the two different console consumer so first i would like to show you that okay then let's discuss uh, what's going on here now let's come to the terminal let's try to create all the topics everything okay so i'm going to copy paste creating the first topic creating the second topic okay so the topics are created okay so now i'm going to uh, create the console producer here in this terminal okay so i'm going to uh, run the console consumer with the isolation level committed the read committed here and uh, the read uncommitted is here okay so they're all running actually okay so now let's start the application so at this point everything looks good we can run start the application so let me run okay looks like things are good okay so uh, 
let me emit the very first transfer request so the key is going to be one from a account to b account i would like to transfer ten dollars okay i'm going to initiate my first transfer request so here we have a read committed consumer here we have a read uncommitted consumer let's see how things are working so if i hit enter now see here i got the results almost immediately okay so here things were a little bit slow but we get the result okay b is going to be credited with the ten dollars a is going to be debited with the ten dollars here also we are seeing the results okay so this is great now if i go back to the ide uh, transfer one success okay if i had not used the last then transfer success one transfer success one i would have seen that twice so that is why i wanted to add this actually okay so great so okay so what about account number three just i am saying we can give anything whatever we like c d comma five if i give like this again i am getting the results immediately here here we have some lag okay that's mainly because we are committing um that we are acknowledging after one second then only we are committing actually you're getting right okay so great okay so now let's what about account number five so a comma b comma five if i do like this what will happen i'm not supposed to get results in both window okay let's wait looks like we are not getting anything okay let's check the console it says that fails validation so it skips so which is good okay great then now let's do the six okay six m comma n comma 15 okay okay now let's see what will happen here if i hit enter wow here i am getting the result okay n is going to be credited with the 15 dollars m is going to be debited with the 15 dollars but here i am not getting any result i'm not getting any records right i mean events right so this is super interesting if we check the console we can see for our event key six value um, this value we after one second we are emitting this um, error while acknowledging right so but what will happen here is that uh, as soon as some error occurred aborting incomplete transaction so the transaction manager uh, rolls back or aborts the transaction okay so this is why the read committed that consumer right it does not see those records i'm going to explain that in detail so no worries but this is what i wanted to show saying that in case of error the transaction is getting um rolled back okay so about it that's what i wanted to show now i am going to simulate another scenario okay so i'm going to stop this also please do note that since the error occurred before acknowledging something like that um basically we did not acknowledge actually okay so if i restart the server i will be getting the same record so but that's fine so let's stop this um let me go to the processor here i'm going to simulate one thing that is uh here we have a sr1 sr2 right so i am able to produce sr1 when i about to produce sr2 some error occurred something like that this is what i am trying to simulate okay so sr1 concatenate with okay so mono dot um, delay duration of seconds one okay so then we have some error actually mono dot error new runtime exception i'm going to say uh oops something like that okay doesn't really matter okay some error i'm trying to simulate here actually okay so then then concatenate with mono dot just sr2 okay something like that actually once we will be emitting sr1 then we will be emitting error signal here after one second as soon as error signal is emitted here this doesn't make any sense but this is what i'm trying to simulate okay so some error occurred so this is what we are trying to see okay now i'm going to run this application uh, 
since the record 6 is still it's not committed right okay now if you see the whoops it's uh, um, it's happening okay if you notice again even in this case we are aborting incomplete transaction so this is great but now let's go back to the ide and check one thing if we check our console here we did not have to produce any event since we did not acknowledge last time because we simulated the error during acknowledgement so the kafka broker would have re-delivered the same event to our application our application as usual it would have processed it would have tried to deliver the sr1 first then the error would have occurred right so again the transaction is basically is not committed incomplete so if you notice here it's very stable it sees only the committed transaction but if you notice we are seeing the n15 alone this time this is from the last time we see both n15 m minus 15 this time we see only the n plus 15 the credit event because before the debit debit event was produced some error would have occurred that would have stopped the pipeline okay so the transaction would have been rolled the transaction was rolled back actually but so here we see only the committed transaction but here we are seeing all the intermediate results hey guys in this lecture we are going to talk about kafka transaction how it works behind the scenes okay in a very 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 high level as you saw in the demo, Kafka transaction gives the application the ability to do exactly once processing. Kafka streams that uses this transaction concept behind the scenes. So uh, this is the setup. Basically, we have one producer application. Okay. And we have one uh, Kafka broker. Okay. So we have a topic here. Let's assume so and there is something called a transaction coordinator which is responsible for managing the transaction it actually maintains the data in the what's going on etc in an internal topic called a transaction state okay now there are two consumers uh, they are interested in consuming e uh, events from this topic okay so this guy or uh, this guy is basically like I want to consume only the committed messages, something like that. Okay. But this guy is okay for any kind of messages, committed and committed, he doesn't care. Okay. So there are two consumers. So the way in which it works is that, so the application, if the producer, if it has to run in the transactional mode, right, transactional producer, we have to explicitly set that producer configuration, the transaction ID. Okay. We have to set that. That's super important. Okay. So using that ID, when it's about to produce in the transaction, right, it has to begin the transaction. That time it will be contacting the transaction coordinator saying that I am having this transaction ID. Can I go ahead and produce a bunch of messages in the transaction mode? So it has to get, uh, it, ha it will be contacting transaction coordinator. This will give the go ahead saying that, okay, go ahead, something like this. So our application will produce some messages, okay, etc then it will be writing the messages in the in the topic okay as usual same stuff okay now as soon as the messages are written right this message will be visible or it can it will be delivered to this consumers okay behind the scene the transaction coordinator will be ma will be watching all this stuff okay these messages will not be delivered to this guy because this guy has so far he has said that he has initialized the transaction, but he, this guy has not yet committed the transaction. So there will be a marker which will be saying that this this the message has been produced, but it's in the pending status, but it's not yet committed actually. Okay, it's in the pending status. So since this guy does not care about all these things, even if it's a pending, okay, we will be delivering this message. So here, any pending message will not be delivered to this person, actually this consumer. Okay, now when it says, yeah, I'm done, I'm committing, when it says something like this, then we will be marking this as a committed message. So since the message is committed, now it can be delivered to this consumer. Okay, so this is how it works in a very, very high level. I'm sure you will be having some questions, okay? But before I answer those questions, I want us to understand this first, that even though we know this, we have discussed this already, 
Kafka topic or partition, right? It's an append only list, something like that. Okay, it's kind of a weird immutable list, which is only append, okay, which supports only append only. Okay, so we can keep on appending data, but once it's appended, you cannot go and change it. Okay, so that is super important to remember that. Okay, now the question is, uh, let's say this guy has initialized the transaction, it has put the trans, um, put the messages what will happen if the messages are aborted or it says that i am aborting the transaction okay what will happen in this case will we be deleting the message no the messages will not be deleted because it's append only okay so but the transaction coordinator will put a mark saying that it's aborted okay something like that okay so this is how it works so what will happen to the aborted message since it's aborted definitely this guy will not see that message okay but this guy will be seeing the message because it says that read uncommitted that basically means that any message he it can receive but this will not receive those aborted messages now let's imagine that when the application start right um, the producer started the consumers were not even there okay nobody is listening but there is a topic this guy produced a bunch of messages okay it initialized the transaction produced a bunch of messages but it did not commit okay did not commit aborted or rolled back okay so now we are starting this and we are starting this and in the read committed mode read and committed mode both of them wants to see the messages from beginning so what will happen same scenario since the messages were aborted it will not see anything since the messages were aborted and this is in the read and committed mode the messages will be delivered to this guy so why is this the read and committed is default it's mainly because the kafka transaction right this feature it has not been there right from the beginning and they added this later a few years ago so for the backward compatibility stuff it's still um, this is the default thing also the transaction right it comes with some little bit of performance overhead okay so nothing is free so there is a little bit of performance overhead actually okay so um, what should i use should i be using read committed or should i be read uncommitted in my application okay so again um, for this kind of questions right we have to ask what the, is the producer is it doing things in the transactional mode because only then it makes a difference otherwise there is no difference actually okay so if the producer is doing things in the producer produce i mean transactional mode and if you want to um, go with the committed records only then you might want this otherwise you can we can use this actually I want you to be aware of this and I think that this is very important. When we read about Kafka uh, transaction exactly once processing etc. It might sound very cool. Okay. But when we when they say about exactly once processing etc. They talk in terms of Kafka perspective only. Okay. Not about our entire application. Of course, they will not know about our application, so they cannot uh, say that. But just I am saying that we have to be careful. We as a developer, we have to be careful actually. That is, if our application can consume events, do some processing and produce events, okay, using the transactional mode, which guarantees that this is happening in one single uh, transaction, atomic operation. Either we can commit or roll back, okay? Okay, but but during the processing phase maybe we might be making a lot of entries in the database or maybe we are calling the remote um, service which might be doing things in its database so we cannot guarantee that these are all happening exactly once you are getting right so we have to be careful actually now i am coming back to the terminal i stopped the producer the consumers are still running this is read committed this is read uncommitted okay so now i am going to the create a producer which is going to produce directly to the transaction events okay so here we are not involving our application i'm going to directly manually put some data via console okay this is what i am trying to do nothing else so one two three something like that some data so if i hit enter here see here i'm see we can see the data here and here okay so 
the point here is that the read committed read uncommitted it kind of makes sense when you use or uh, it kind of makes a difference when you use transactional producer otherwise both are basically kind of same now i like to show you something um, if you do not want to do this yourself if you think that it's confusing there is um, another way to send uh, for example if you take a look at this dot sender okay there is something called send transactionally okay so if you look at this um, the input type right it accepts a publisher of publisher of sender records that is what we can do here is you can send a flux of flux of sender records okay something like that you can give flux of flux of sender record so what it will do is that the it will take the inner flex okay it will take the inner flex uh, whatever the items a set of items it will produce right it's a publisher flex um, flex of sender records it could emit one or hundred uh, empty it doesn't really matter so it will assume that the entire uh, flex records um, they all have to be produced transactionally okay it will assume like that okay so if they are all produced successfully it will commit otherwise it will roll back something like that we can also do this way but if you go and check the source code this is what they do okay so i i wanted to show this intentionally so so that we can have some control if you want if you think that more control yeah we can do this way or we can also do this way hey guys this will be a short theory lecture we are going to talk about one important ex exception which we might get particularly when we use transaction okay that is producer fenced exception so when do i get it so what does it mean so when you get this exception that basically means that the kafka broker the transaction coordinator will not allow you to produce that's it so you have to restart the server you have to stop the producer and recreate another producer instance okay so that is the solution that's what we have to do but why it happens let's discuss that now so this is my producer let's imagine that this is order service okay my order service has to produce a bunch of records in the transactional mode i am i have given transaction id is order service something like that okay so now using that he will call this guy can i it will initialize the transaction transaction coordinator will also say that okay you can start producing the records so it's working on producing the records okay so during that time because of the cpu utilization and the memory utilization the auto scaler created another instance okay now this guy will also be calling uh, contacting transaction coordinator saying that hey transaction coordinator i am the order service i am going to begin the transaction something like that now this will confuse the kafka broker or transaction coordinator saying that oh there was another guy with the same name so you know what i'm going to stop that guy so you can start producing the records something like that okay so this is when this um, application will be getting this exception okay so you have to be very very careful to use a unique transactional id for each and every application so it's kind of safe to append something random like uu id along with your application name something like that so that we can be safe the same issue might also happen when the transaction timeout occurs that is you have unique transactional id okay great you initialized the transaction okay but you start producing records but you have not committed or aborted the last 60 60 seconds or something so the default timeout is 60 seconds um, there is a property called a transaction timeout in millisecond which you can always configure so if you have not committed or about it then the transaction coordinator will assume that the producer is basically dead something like that okay so we have to be careful with the unique transactional id and ensuring that we are taking action within like within the transactional timeout millisecond or you can increase the timeout hey guys in this lecture we are going to take a look at kafka's delivery semantics kafka supports three kinds of um, the delivery types actually uh, one is at least once at most once and exactly once 
in the ex at least once this is the default setting actually both producer and uh, the consumer side so when when it says at least once right the advantage here is that we will not be losing any message actually that is the advantage so how are we achieving at least once if you remember the producer side the producer by default it will retry it will look for acknowledgement saying that yes the message has been successfully written in, in the partition something like that it will look for acknowledgement so because of that it will retry so that is the default setting so that there is a slight throughput impact but we will not be losing any message okay similarly and uh, at the consumer side messages might be re-delivered uh, till we ex explicitly acknowledge the message after processing okay so it is our responsibility to make our application item potent so there are a couple of drawbacks but the advantage is that we will not be losing any message and i assume that this is what we would want in most of the cases okay then the next one is at most once okay so here the advantage is that this is super low latency at the producer side so how can we achieve this by setting the the acknowledgement acks property by setting that to zero we can achieve that because we will not be looking for any acknowledgement from any broker actually okay and the consumer side we will not be getting any duplicate message this is great by the way i did not show that to you we have went we had not seen the demo but i'll show that um, okay so here we will not be getting any duplicates the way in which we achieve this is first we will get the message we will acknowledge first we'll commit first okay then only we will start processing so this is how this is we are achieving the at most ones but during the processing if the server crashed or some exception occurred and handled the exception then basically that's it you lost the message okay so that is the advantage so we have to be careful then exactly once as we saw now using the transaction mode transaction coordinator etc we can achieve exactly once um, in kafka but of course nothing is free in the world so there is some impact might be there there could be some performance impact but if, if this is the use case we want to have, yeah, Kafka supports that as well. I would like to quickly show you the at most ones. I am in the consumer side. Okay, so we have the Kafka receiver, right? So I'm going to show that uh, receive at most ones. Okay, so there is something called at most ones. So if you click on it, right, here, what they will do is that if they check the code, they will first commit, then only they will give you the receiver record actually okay so so this is why i'm saying that there is a very good chance i mean yeah there is a very good chance that we might be losing the message uh, during if during the processing if you face any error then basically we will lose the message actually because the message is basically already committed hey guys finally we are going to learn reactive kafka with the spring if you remember i had already shown you this that the spring kafka dependency under the reactive package we have only two classes at least at this time of recording this lecture so one is reactive kafka producer template the other one is reactive kafka consumer template the producer template behind the scene uses the kafka sender and the consumer template uses kafka receiver since we have been using this kafka sender and the kafka receiver in this entire course so far we should be comfortable with this producer and the consumer template as well we have also been uh, only producing and consuming only the string type so far we can also see how to produce and consume object type there are some challenges in that uh, we will also see all those things okay how to handle all those challenges etc normally in spring we will be using a lot of cool annotations and the annotations will look like it's doing all the heavy work for us right but in react in the spring reactive kafka we do not have any such annotations as you saw in the previous slide so we have just two templates that's it nothing much people also had 
asked for annotations actually hey do we have annotation because there is something called the kafka listener for the the non reactive version so should we also use the same kafka listener annotation for reactive type as well something like that but the maintainer has responded saying that there is no uh, code reduction here because the, the reactive pipeline is already very simple and it's doing all the heavy lift for us so the timeout pattern retry pattern all this kind of this resilient design patterns already built into this reactive pipeline actually so this is already very simple and they do not have any plans to introduce any special annotation for this actually okay at least at this time of recording this course there is no such annotation i thought of letting you know this then we will be writing integration test in the next section so even for the integration test we would be using the same kafka receiver and the sender let's come back to ide um, i have already shared certain spring properties so copy those and under source main resources i'm going to create application yaml and i'm going to paste those okay so like this um here oops sorry this is okay sorry about the format okay spring cup okay so here i am giving some consumer properties so this is my bootstrap server please update um based on your port information etc i am giving this is my group consumer group okay consumer group id and the auto offset reset is i would like to read from the beginning this is my key deserializer this is a consumer okay so i am using string for now no worries we will come to the object type okay in within few lectures actually then this is value deserializer okay this is what i am giving i am also going to create a separate package section 16 under that i am going to create a class this is for spring um, configuration kafka consumer config okay so i am going to add the configuration annotation so here the very first thing what i am going to do is that i have i'm going to create the receiver option actually so public so receiver option string string something like that for now okay so receiver options okay so which which is going to accept uh kafka properties okay so this guy so kafka properties this kafka properties um this object this is nothing but this 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 object actually if you ever have any questions like what are all the properties um we can give here something like this then you can always check this object if you click on this so the consumer this this is the property we are trying to give something like this so the enable auto commit group id a key serial a key deserializer all those things we are giving actually okay we can also pass additional information via consumer dot property something like that so um if i go back here so we, here we can give consumer properties producer producer properties etc the bootstrap servers it can also be common for both producer and consumer right often times so you can also mention that under spring dot kafka dot bootstrap servers you can also mention that if you want so here let's uh, return the receiver object is your options object okay so receiver options dot create here you have to pass the properties right so here we can say kafka properties dot build consumer properties so that's it actually okay so we can give like this uh, sorry for a i forgot the subscription our the topic right so here we have to give um the topic name so here we can say a list of let's say order events for now okay so we can also do this way okay so this guy is throwing is because of this once this is done let's create the reactive kafka consume a template of type string type string okay so consume a template we can call like this so here i am going to get the the receiver option beans so type string 
options okay so now let me do this okay so return new reactive kafka consumer template this guy accepts the receiver options as you see okay so that's it now i'm going to add the b annotation here and let's not forget the b annotation here as well that's it super simple stuff right now we can auto wear this wherever we want we have created our spring consumer configuration let's quickly create a simple consumer runner so that we can check our the spring is really working or not okay so implements command line runner okay so this is going to be a service of course so it's going to be a spring bean so let me implement this method okay so now i can auto wire the reactive kafka consumer template of type string string i'm going to simply call this a template okay i'm also oops i am also going to have i can simply copy this guy paste it here copy this paste it here okay so this dot template dot receive now here you will be receiving the values okay receiver record here you can check log dot info key value as usual or dot key or dot value okay dot subscribe okay at this point we can start the spring application actually even though we have here we have this many packages we have not created any spring components so they, they should not mess up here we have only this application so that should be fine let's run this and see oops, oops, oops. Um, oh okay the topic is not there sorry about that let's create the topic and come back so now i'm going to create the topic order events so starting the producer i'm also going to start the application okay looks like this guy has joined successfully so now i can simply say something wow okay it's working so super simple stuff right okay so this is working so now what we are going to do is that uh okay string is enough now we are going to bring the object so we are also going to create a producer which will be producing order event or dto something like that then we are going to consume here okay so we are going to see how um, it's going to work hey guys now in this lecture i'm going to create this simple order event dto so i'm going to use java record 17 record okay so Also feel free to use Lambag, whatever you like. So UUID, order ID, okay, I'm giving something long, customer ID, I'm typing something guys, okay, something random. So you can give whatever you like to give here. So local, date, uh, time, so maybe we can call this order date, something like that, okay. Let me correct this, small d, okay. So now um, our consumer config, right? This is more no longer string string, okay? This is order, order event type, okay? So since this is order event, this should be order event, this should be order event, this should be order event, okay? So they're all order event type. So this guy should also be the order event type. Now let's go to the application YAML and as I'm also going to bring the producer here. So uh, I would like to keep this common. So we can keep it like this. All the common prop. This is common for both producer and consumer. So I'm keeping like this. We can do actually. Okay. So then uh, we can also give our producer properties. Actually, it automatically gives that option. But okay. So here in this case, we want key serializer and the d serial sorry yeah here we want the serializer actually in both cases okay so key serializer and the value serializer 
okay deserializer here okay so now uh, okay in our case the key i am still keeping the string but it doesn't have to be string it can be anything if you want to give uuid you can it can be anything okay so in this case i'm still keeping string so in this case it should be a string serializer okay now uh, for this right um, kafka um, sorry spring kafka provides something called a json serializer okay so for me let me come here okay we can type json okay so this guy comes from arg spring framework kafka support so this is the guy we want so just copy this this is exactly what we want let's clean up this later okay so this is the deserializer okay so this is what we want okay and here we want the serializer so just remove de and serializer okay so this is what we want here also if you remember we used to give a group instance id along with the group id so what how can i give that here so if you have questions like this i told you already so go to kafka properties check consumer here there is nothing called group instance id but if you want to give any additional kafka properties you can always use properties or we can give here consumer property uh, here we can add any additional properties programmatically if you want to do something like that so okay let me give the properties here for now and here it should be group instance id it should be one okay so okay let me stringify this and usually if the properties are like this i will also kind of stringify this okay okay just to be safe now let's work on the kafka producer configuration producer config so configuration i'm going to simply copy the this guy and i'm going to modify because the concept wise it's going to be more or less same okay so now here um, instead of receiver right it's going to be sender okay so sender option Okay, let me import this okay so then this is what i'm also going to get it here so sender option okay so here i'm going to call this sender option so kafka properties okay so let me copy this guy so sender option dot create now this is not build consumer properties this is build producer properties okay so this does not have subscription so i think this is good okay so now options this is producer template and this is also i'm going to change that to producer okay so now let me import this guy okay and if i copy this and paste it here and that's it this is also good similar to consumer runner i'm going to create a producer runner same concept okay implements command line run okay so i'm going to add the service annotation so let me copy this guy and paste it here let's slightly modify as usual and copy this producer runner paste it here okay so here we do not want consumer template we want producer template and this is our event type okay this is good so we are going to um, keep on emitting certain orders so for that i am going to create a simple flex here so flex of um, order event flex of order event so we can call this order flex so return flex i am going to um, emit interval duration of millis every 500 millisecond okay and we can also take take like 1000 1000 events okay then dot map so here i will be getting some i okay oops i okay so now we, we are going to create new order event the order event is going to accept uuid right so okay so let me give the uuid random uuid okay 
then what else customer id so customer id can be i whatever we get we can simply give that and uh, last one is the time local date time dot now okay so this is good now in the run method um, we can say this dot template now if you see all the the send transactionally uh, all those methods right transaction manager everything you will get okay the send sender record okay so you have all the methods actually okay the publisher of sender records everything the way in which the kafka sender you used we can still use it here okay but it also provides few convenient methods if you see send topic name and you can directly pass the object as well okay so this will behind the scenes it will kind of um, convert actually so topic key we can also use this okay so let's use this actually so this dot um, order flex map so the map you are getting order event right oh, okay o e order event okay so this dot template send now we can use the topic name the topic is order events we can also auto wire from properties if you want okay so the topic name actually okay so um, then for the key right i'm going to use order event uh, get the order id okay but it's a uuid not string so i'm going to use two string actually then what is the value oh, value is basically simply order event okay since this is a reactive type right so let's use flat map okay as usual then i'm going to receive remove this guy so that we can use the do on next okay so here um we want the the result correlation metadata so i'm going to keep it like uh like this so our dot correlation metadata okay so like this then subscribe that's it super right actually if you notice uh, we get the sender result wide type so the correlation metadata is going to be a wide type so if you notice the send it all returns with send void actually so if you want the result then we have to use the send the publisher type sender record whichever you used to do right we have to use the same format actually okay so this is fine and no worries okay so instead of correlation metadata maybe if we want we can also use a record metadata and we can print this whole object okay so let's keep it like this or we can also print any specific information like offset partition etc we can also do that okay so let's keep it like that for now since we have already produced some string values into the topic i want us to delete the topic and recreate the new topic okay or we can also use latest so that we will be getting latest value uh, that is one option but here i am going to recreate the topic okay so everything looks good uh, now let's run the application and see now if you see the producer is able to produce values okay uh, it's a order event and it it's printing the offset okay now now this is the tricky part now it says that error deserializing key value okay uh, it says that unexpected exception now let's check okay the exception is the root cause is the class com wins guru reactive kafka playground 16 16 order event is not in the trusted packages that is it expect the class whatever the dto right it expects the dto um, the, that class to be part of this package okay if you believe this okay so basically we have to add some additional property okay so let's talk about that hey guys in this lecture we are going to discuss how the spring serialization deserialization works here okay so in the previous lecture we were able to produce events without any issue however the consumer application was not able to deserialize the event so it was throwing some exception saying that it's not in the trusted package something like that okay now let's discuss what it is 
okay so this is producer replication kafka consumer replication okay when the producer replication produce events right what it will do is that it will be appending some header information okay something like type id it will be like underscore underscore type id something like that not exactly like this it will be appending type id and uh, it will be giving the f the, the class the package name okay the fully qualified name like this it will be sending like this now you might ask why are we sending like this what is the point of adding this header okay so remember that we might be having some interface called car interface and we might be having multiple implementation honda could be an implementation bmw could be an implementation right similarly in the event driven architecture style right so maybe you might be having one interface and you can you might be having multiple implementation like order created event order updated event order deleted event so you could be having multiple classes implementation but you might want to send all those events in the order events topic right okay so because of this the producer application will be sending the type id information in the header and it will be sending the message to the kafka broker kafka broker does not care about all those things for kafka broker everything is binary so it will be simply storing all those information okay okay when the consumer asks for it it will not know how, how to deserialize deserialize this okay so it will be using this type id information to decode that uh, object okay if it's a car uh, if it's a bmw it will decode as a bmw if it's, it's a honda it will be deserializing as a honda okay so this is why the type ID. this is when the type id will be used okay okay but what about the trusted package why do we have the trusted package okay so if we can send some type id in the header and if we could send some byte array this guy can decode um, anything like that right there could be some security vulnerability as well who knows for example i might be sending some malicious code and i might be saying that hey can you decode this as a secret send password something like this the class you have in your application can you decode like that i can send like this right so because of this uh, what they do is that the application has to say explicitly say that these are the packages i am trusting okay this, so something like this it has to provide so it has to provide i i am going to trust only our given screw dto the package i will not be trusting any other package so if it if it has a configuration like this um, when we send messages it will deserialize okay but if you send something like this it will not de deserialize and it will throw the error Hey guys, in this lecture, we are going to update the Spring JSON trusted packages property. Okay, so before that, uh, since we do not have any issues at the producer side, I am going to comment the producer. Otherwise, this will also keep on producing. Mm, so let's comment this out. Okay, so the property what we have to add is um, we have to add that property at the consumer side. Okay, so here the property name is uh, spring dot json dot trusted dot packages okay so here we have to provide the package we are trusting actually okay so we are allowing to decode so we can put star if you want okay it's not recommended we can also do this way it will work okay in this case uh, i can simply copy the entire package name so uh, assuming this is the package in under which I have all my um, classes, did even classes I can give like this. Okay, so also this is not just one single package; it's a comma separated list. You can you can provide multiple package details. Okay, so okay. Also, um, another thing is this property, right? If you go to JSON deserializer, if you click on this, you can see this here. Okay, so this is the property trusted packages is what I have given okay okay so now let's run this and see wow okay now if you notice we can see the key the UUID okay 
then we can also see the value the order event order id customer id order date so now we get everything right this is very simple right now i'm going to show you the header information as well okay so i do not want this so we have already seen this i'm updating this in the consumer runner since we have seen the key value the object but I would like to give the header information. So I'm going to copy this guy, which we have already done earlier. So, okay, let's copy this and paste it here. So basically header information, that is what I'm printing. Okay, nothing else. So now if I try to run this, I want to see the headers. Actually it will not show ideally i should have shown this by this time but it will not is mainly because there is another property as usual okay so let's update that okay so the way in which it works is that this time i am going to update here consumer property json deserializer okay dot remove type header uh, okay remove type info headers okay so i am going to change that to false okay so basically what happens is that the it will be the producer will be sending type um, information okay the consumer right it will try to use the type information to deserialize and after that it will remove that information so that is why we are not seeing that in the console it will remove that by default if the property is true uh, we are changing that to false we are saying that no do not remove the type header that's what we are saying actually okay so if i run this okay so now we are seeing the header okay so it's underscore underscore type id something like this so here so we are receiving the the package name so using this it's trying to deserialize okay so sometimes we might be like, I, I do not care what the other person sending the package type ID information. I do not want to use that. We might be thinking like that. Okay. So in that case, yes, we can. There is another property which we can use not to look for this information. And instead, we can go with our own um, DTO. Okay. Instead of using, the, instead of saying whatever they say here, the producer side. Hey guys, in this lecture, we are going to see how the consumer application can decode the message in its own format. Okay, instead of using uh, the producer package. Okay, so for that, I'm going to create one custom class. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, dummy order, something like that. Okay, so this is how the consumer wants to deserialize the message so for for that i'm going to simply copy these two fields and i'm going to put this here but it's a string and it's a string let's keep it like that okay so this is the message format the consumer expects so let's assume so okay now i have to update everything like dummy order type here Let's update this is a dummy order, dummy order everywhere. This looks good. What about the consumer runner? Here, let's update this as well. I do not want to see the header. We have already seen this. So this guy now we will be getting the dummy order type. So we want to print uh, the customer ID. Let's assume so. Okay, we want to print the customer ID here. Okay. Okay, so everything looks good. Now let's run and see. So here it will fail. It's expected is mainly because it cannot cast the order even to this dummy order. That's what it shows. Okay, yes, this is expected. Okay, that's happening is mainly because after the type and the information in the header. Okay, so here in the consumer property right we have to explicitly say that json deserializer 
do not use that information okay so we have to explicitly say that use type info information this is true by default okay this is true the value is true we are going to explicitly say that it's false okay do not use that that's what we are saying similarly it will remove the type information header as well so we are saying that do not remove that that's what we are saying again it can also be it can be stringified as well we can also keep it like this okay now I'm going to run this and let's see. Okay, so this is another error. This is also expected. Okay, that basically means, hey, you are saying that we should not be using type information in the header. Then how do you want me to deserialize? What type is that? You have, can you provide the default type you want? Basically, that's what it, should, should, it says. Okay, so we have to give that as well. So let's add that. So consumer property, okay, JSON deserializer. Basically, I wanted to show all these ex exception. Okay, so these are all the things we might be facing. That's why I wanted to give all these exception uh, exception one by one. Okay, the value default type. Okay, also I am just giving it here because it's easy. But if you want to go to the application YAML, right? If you want, you can go and give it here as well, one by one. Okay, so. You, what is the key so you can just simply get it this that's it spring json value default type this is the key okay you can give that so in our case it's a dummy order class okay this is the type this is what we are saying okay so now let's run this finally it understands okay so we are getting the key and the value the customer id okay so now we are able to deserialize this hey guys now let's quickly summarize whatever we had done in this section as you saw the spring reactive kafka is basically very simple super lightweight we have only two templates so one is reactive kafka producer template and the other one is consumer template so you will be creating one template depends on your requirement okay so here which accepts this producer template accepts the sender options which we have been using throughout this course so this is very simple and whatever um, the method it has right whatever we you are going to invoke everything is going to be delegated to the kafka sender mostly okay then for the consumer side similarly we create the consumer template by passing the receiver option okay so if you are going to use simple string string type everything will be super simple but in the real life you will be really want you you will want to produce object type like order event order cancellation event user registration event something like that a proper object type right so again for the c uh, serialization at the producer side you will be uh, passing the json serializer okay so uh, this is from spring so this will be taking care um, everything but at the consumer side, there are few things we have to um, look into, like whether you want to use the information header, type header or not. You want to keep this or not. So if you are not going to use all these things, then how do you want to decode? So we have to provide this kind of information to the consumer side, actually, at the, these properties. Okay, so that it will understand and it will decode accordingly okay so this is the one small thing we have to um, worry about okay so this is very important also remember that at the consumer side during the deserialization we might face exception for example this issue will come when there is a complete mismatch that is the producer is producing one thing but we are trying to decode in a completely diff different format altogether you are getting right so yeah this might happen okay so for that we can we have if you remember we were using a error handling deserializer okay first of all this error handling deserializer it comes from spring only okay so we can use this and we can also provide one default object if you want okay or we can also use dead letter queue to pass this information to the DLQ dead letter topic actually okay so we can also do all those things all the error handling part we have already covered in detail so we can use this so how can I use error handling deserialization um, here in the spring 
So the same way here you will be configuring the error handling deserializer in the receiver option. This is one way. Or or um, if you go to the okay, if you go to this right. Okay, so we can also use the error handling deserializer um, here. Okay error handling deserializer we can give it here okay then what is the actual value deserializer class in the error handling deserializer it accepts the actual um, delegate right so if you are going to use property where will i give the this class the delegate class so for that just copy this okay just copy this whatever you have here okay come to the application yaml then here you will be providing this okay then you will be providing here like this so in this case it will be like this you're getting right so this will be error handling so okay i'm going to use error handling deserializer okay so this is the delicate class you're getting right so we will be passing something like this okay for me if it's really confusing i would say go ahead with and do here actually this is very simple and we are not yet fully done we will be writing integration test for this and after that we will also be developing a, a couple of simple spring microservices which 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 is going to talk via kafka